Well, good afternoon, everyone, from sunny Bell Reeve. The weather this week has been fairly ordinary, but conditions today for this match between Clarence and Devonport pretty good, and Bell Reeve, as ever, has come up a treat. Well, it's between Clarence and Devonport today, and Gary Davidson's our expert today. And, Dave, it really is a preview of the game in two weeks' time, the elimination final. That's right, Rob, and fourth playing fifth, and uh, probably a bit like last week's game, the side that wins will have a huge psychological advantage in the next finals where they'll, where they would meet. And I think we're going to see some very attractive football. The game is going to be played on a bigger ground with a good surface, so we'd expect to see some good running football, and, and I suspect we'll see some good high marking as well. OK, let's hope that the skills today are top-notch. Earlier this afternoon, Rod Kilner spoke with both coaches from Devonport and Clarence. Basically, oh, it's, it's full spot that we want and uh, something that we've got hold of and want to keep. I mean, you've got to try and uh, approach today's game as if it is the final. I mean, it's very important psychologically to perform well against the side that you're going to be playing in a fortnight's time and very important for our players today to, to get a tick against their name as a team and as an individual. So, yeah, all of our guys will be treating it pretty seriously. Indeed, it is an important game. You see there that Devonport still harbours some aspirations for finishing in fourth. They've got the job ahead of them. They'd really need Clarence to lose both their games. And Clarence do play North Hobart in the final round. So Devonport, if they can win today and next week, could finish fourth and, importantly, play the elimination final up on the northwest coast. Still a tremendous battle going at the top between North Hobart and North Launceston. And both teams have got some hard games coming up. Yes, and the remainder of the second last round today, Hobart playing New Norfolk, South Launceston, North Hobart, the Norky against Sandy Bay. That's the Battle of the Wooden Spoon. And Bernie playing North Launceston. You'd say on paper that's going to be a win to North Launceston, but down at West Park, you never know. And the weather conditions here, thankfully, are very good. And let's now go down to our man on the boundary line, former Sandy Bay coach Andy Bennett. Thank you, Rod. Uh, as you've mentioned, the conditions here are terrific for, uh, for good football. The ground is in excellent condition and a real credit to both the people who uh, planned the drainage when the ground was renovated a number of years ago and to the people who prepare the ground week to week. There is a wind blowing to a screen left. That's the river end of the ground and possibly that would be worth two or three goals. The cricket pitch area in the middle of the ground is soft and that, uh, that uh, may cause the... Uh, uh, players a little bit of problem with their footing but overall the ground is in terrific condition I visited the rooms very briefly before the game and uh, as we've mentioned this is a bit of a finals dress rehearsal and the tension in those rooms uh, suggested that both sides were very uh, very up for this game um, I think uh, Clarence is going to miss Adams but I like their side a little better in terms of talent than uh, Devonport today well here is the Clarence team Cooney, Bug and Whitaker all played in the reserves and they've got a few players coming back, notably Maine, two weeks uh, into a comeback. But that, that looks a good lineup, even though it is minus uh, Adams from the back line. And if we can have a look at Devonport, as we're just about to get underway, and a very settled lineup, and perhaps the key on how the young forwards uh, can perform, particularly Richardson at centre half forward. Gary Davidson's with us now. Gary, uh, important contest, a selection for us, please. Well, Clarence are the form side uh, of the two teams. They've won a number of games over past weeks and had that exciting draw with Hobart a few weeks ago, and I'm going to tip Clarence to win today. So we're away here at Bell Reef. And it's a bit gluey here in the middle. Holdsworth can't control it. Matthew Honey, the big fellow there. And the Roos will be first into attack. I think the breeze that they're kicking with in this first quarter left of screen down to the river end will be worth two or three goals. Kent Jackson goes for the top, doesn't get hold of it, and it doesn't come off. And the ball has been marked here by young Ben Harrison in the back line. Harrison up towards centre wing. Good mark by Smith. This is Shane Smith up towards half forward. Richardson, the target, the teal cupper, and you'll get that mark. And that's pretty important for them today too, Rod. We saw them a few weeks ago and they didn't use Richardson with his leads at centre half forward. If he can lead like that all day, he's certainly going to be a great target for them. And that's going to be a mark and or a free kick to Shane McCoy. Brownless didn't have any opportunity to spoil. There's the kick up, looking for Jaffray, opposed by Witter. Witter, the subtle use of the body, spills to Morrison, who lines up the goals and pops it through. The first on the board in the opening minute and a half of play. And that goes against the win, so a fine start to the Devonport Blues with David Morrison. 
happy we saw him in great form a few weeks ago uh, playing against Hobart because this is his forte, being able to run to the fall of the ball and clean anything up that does hit the ground. We saw him kick four goals in a very exciting last quarter that he performed in. And that's a great start for them, as you say, Rod, going against that breeze. I suspect it's a little more than two to three goals, as we saw in the reserves game. So it's a very good start. This is Honey versus Brett Smith. Smith wins it. And the Blues will go into attack again. Morrison involved. Almost single-handedly got Devonport back into that game against Hobart with some goals late in the quarter. Beautiful mark from Jaffray. What a superb grab. Witter did virtually everything he could, couldn't he? Great aerial skills. And he thinks he's a chance here. Centre half forward goes long. It won't quite make the distance. And that was almost marked in defence. Not paid by the umpire. And Scott Wade from the back pocket kicks it up towards Page or Honey. And Page takes it from the 35. In towards the middle of the ground. Jones looks for Winter. Winter can run on to David Giles. This looks promising now for Clarence as Giles goes through the middle. Kicks it short. What a beautiful pass. And Andrew Scott on the lead. Given far too much latitude. Well, really, I thought McCormick was caught out because Giles looked as though he was going to bomb the ball to the goal square, but he just had the presence of mind to pinpoint the pass to Andrew Scott. Who comes in as a shot. It's close. He's just missed it to the left. How big a hole is Scott Adams going to be, Gary? Well, they're not a very tall side, Clarence, and so I suspect they're going to have to rely on Honey to do a lot of work, and uh, he's going to be a, a big loss simply because he'd been playing very, very well for them, and uh, they'd be keeping their fingers crossed that uh, he could be back in time for the finals. It's McCormick bringing it out. Big pack of players there. Morrison reads it beautifully, gets it over the top in the direction of Cullen, up to centre wing, Sheriff. Now the opportunity for the Blues. Deep into attack. Out comes Brown. Composed to Brownless. Brown lost the handle on the footy. Players battling in there. Richardson, now Wade. Feeds it out. Feeds it out nicely. Good tackle. Centre half forward. Now the opportunity for the Blues again. Lithgow. He's been in excellent form the last few weeks. Jaffray. Who's down? Clarence. Ball of the ball to Brownless. Great tackle, good pressure out there at the moment. McCallum, was that Bealy? Up towards the centre wing, Holdsworth. Oh, hit and hope, that one. Smith, Shane, Morrison again. He's had about five possessions in the first four minutes of play. Back to Brett Smith, got great shepherding. Half forward, Richardson, started well. Plenty of height up in this different port forward line. Stocker, the big fellow's back. Jaffray's here, a chance. Goes against Winter. They knock it down to ground. Ricky Brown on the left boot. Just misses. Good bit of roving. Pounced on the footy. He was always under pressure. So that, good opening to this game, Gary. And that's a sort of role. It is a good opening, Rob. And uh, that's a sort of role that Ricky Brown can play exceptionally well. He's got to really run to all the marking contests that young Richardson and particularly Jaffray are going to be involved in. Out towards Brownless. Great mark. Yes, the umpire paying that. And the Bell Reeve Oval, what can you say about, apart from the fact that it is absolutely magnificent, the amount of rain that has fallen here. And apart from a little, being a little bit gluey in centre wicket area, it's superb. Allowing both teams to use their skills. Centre wing. Down to the ball. Jackson. Scramble. Ritchie against his old team. Now Holdsworth the opportunity if the ball will sit for him. It won't. It runs away from him down the slight hill there. And we'll see a throw in some 35, 40 metres away from the Clarence goal. Seven plays one. It's Devonport leading. We've been playing around six minutes of the first quarter. Half forward flank. Clarence just into attack, but they lose it here. Shane Smith to McCoy. Harrison now up towards centre wing. No one can take the mark. Big Ritchie comes down with a footy. Well, fumble from McCallum, but they had plenty of time. And so Ritchie back to centre half forward. Brett Smith's in the way here and oh. juggles the mark very well indeed. 1992 has been a great year for big Brett Smith. Heads to centre half forward. Sheriff 
couldn't drag it down. McCoy had it stolen away from him by Jones. Smith late on the scene. Bealy bombs it back to full forward. Jackson knocked away from him by Chris Dell. That's an interesting one. David Page, great tackle late on him. Jackson keeps going. Back to Andrew Scott. But all the numbers here with Devonport and Dean Cullen. Directs traffic out here towards the lawn side of Bell Reef. But the ball will go over the line before David Giles can get there. Good intensity by Devonport in the early stages, Gary. Well, they realise how important it is to get away to a good start, particularly going up the hill against the breeze. Shane Smith feeds it out. Half back line, McCoy. Ooh, did he cop one there? I'd like to see that one again in replay. Very subtle. And he did cop an elbow to the back of the head. Here it is again. Ooh. Look at that. Scott Wade. Well, up to half forward. I think that's occasion all you can say is the picture tells the story. Now the opportunity. Lithgow to Shane Smith. Devon Porter running. Looking for the lead of Stocker up there. The lumbering giant under pressure. Good pressure. Cullen now Ritchie. Who goes long half forward. Cullen underneath the ball. They made a meal of that one. McCormick and unfortunately we see McCoy's going off the ground. That blow to the head. Quite a nasty one. And then the ball up towards centre wing again. Two on one here. The numbers favour Clarence. McCallum goes back to Giles. 18 and 19 combined. McCoy, I hope he doesn't get in the way. Lovely kick this one though. And Jones has it on the half forward line. Rather, Matthew Honey. Umpires missed that incident too. If ever there was a case for trial by video, that was it. In towards the forward pocket. One behind. It's a shame because McCoy had started the game off particularly well, hadn't he? He's a pretty in integral part of the Tippenport side. He's a good running player. He often performs a role as a tagger and uh, certainly can play off the half-back flank and, and has become a fairly creative player for them this year. That'll be a free kick against Scott Wade. Off the ball. It was Lithgow who was tagged and taken to the ground. Centre wing now. Richardson Brownless does brilliantly, doesn't he? Jones went without the footy. Morrison in there. Battling away. Also Page. Interesting that uh, our gold medalist in Steve Hawkins, the double sculler, is over here at the Bell Reeve Oval today. He's a Hobart supporter, but he's a great mate of David Pages, so he's over here to see how his mate does in this very important game against Devonport. And there's the ball over the boundary line. We'll see a throw in just adjacent to our commentary position. Well, in fact, uh, Stephen Hawkins might see David Page perform a very significant role for Clarence today because he's got the job of tagging young Morrison as he runs around the ground. Certainly been lent to the footy so far in this match. Morrison already prominent. Now here's an opportunity for Devonport. And it's kicked up towards centre half forward. They're having a few problems here. The strong Clarence defence doing well. Good tackle laid on Bearley. Play on's the call. Wade Anthony now. In towards full forward. Not a good kick. Although the mark was dropped in by Probert. Stocker couldn't gain possession. It comes here towards McKellum. That was a good tap. And this is when they might get some run through Winter out of defence. And chips it in towards half four, half back. And perhaps a little bit lucky was that free kick uh, being paid to Nick Taylor. But he had the run of the ball anyway. Has a couple of bounces. Gets some good shepherding by Cullen. Over to Page. Now the opportunity for the Ruse. Gee, they look good when they move the ball. That time the ball a little bit too long. The mark taken by McLennan in defence. Off to Morrison again. Gee, had a swag of possessions. Up towards half forward. The ball holding up into the wind. And Peter Ritchie reading it best of all. Pops to take the mark and will deliver towards Jones and or Honey. Honey it is. Could get it off to Bealey. But he decides not to. That's a good long kick. Look at the wind take that. McCormick back there. Had control. Couldn't take the mark. Quick hand pass back to Holdsworth. Smothered off the boot. And another behind to the Ruse. They trail by four points. And we've been playing just on the ten minutes of the first quarter. Doing well so far, Devonport. Well, they're very intense the way they're going about getting possessions and of course with Morrison in such great form they've got a very good ball carrier to bring it forward. Shane Smith was the target on that occasion but Matthew Jones read it well. Heads to half forward. Taylor now has a fit of the fumbles. Loses it. Oh dangerous on the intercept here as Cullen opens it up for Richie. Richie goes long with the hand pass. Steaming out is the caveman Andrew Scott and he's lost it now. McLennan 
weaves a bit of a passage after a bit of uncertainty and does particularly well to get it to Clinton Dick. Dick up towards the wing and Ricky Brown covering plenty of territory takes the mark. Devonport against this breeze playing the possession game. Good long kick from Ricky Brown. Looks for Richardson who was up far, far too early and has given away the free kick. I think he's got over the shoulder of Scott McCallum. Or Blair Brownless. Six and one, half a dozen the other. Brownless back towards centre wing. Looking for Richie. Here's John Cullen. On the left boot. Poor kick. They lose it again. Anthony up towards centre wing from whence it came. Holm does well. Half forward line. Unkind bounce. Dell. Over to a teammate there in Paul Richards, the deputy vice captain. And I reckon pretty lucky to get that one. It was definitely high, no question about it. But ducked the head right down. And so Paul Richards, who's had a pretty terrible run with injuries over the years, but he's come back. Centre wing, David Page, good mark. Let's chips it off to Giles, who unloads up towards half forward. Lithgow, the opportunity. Cullen does well. Chips it wide. Need to come off. Brett Smith. One juggle, two juggles, and paid. Fair enough. Uh, Brett Smith, one of the shortest ruckmen in the league when he has to play in the ruck. Up towards half forward. Winner, great mark. Well, here's Scott Wade. He has got metres. No Devonport player within Kelly of him. And he can virtually have another bounce run in and go for goal. Or even better, can pass it to Andrew Scott. But the kick was an absolute shocker. And there's your reaction. Disappointed with himself, and he knows it. He's been a good target for them so far, Andrew Scott. He usually plays half-back, but occasionally has swung into the forward line, starting in the forward line today. And, of course, he's been on the end of a couple of very, very good passes that have come into the forward line so far. Clarence deep into attack here. Jackson tried to shark it. Quick shot at goal. It's gone right across the face. Matthew Jones, hasn't he started well, the youngster? Number 28. Played some good games for the Roos this year. In his first season. And is now a regular. And throw in. Up goes Scott. Opportunity McCormick. Oh, here's a chance for Jackson. Morrison going to put pressure on him. Oh, well played, Jackson. Does it very well indeed. And then a beautiful pass. Great use of the footy. And he finds Taylor. That was great work. Firstly to beat Morrison. And then to look up. See Taylor free. And Taylor's kicking from 50 out. But with this wind behind him, distance shouldn't be a trouble. This to put the ruse in front. They're at moment four points behind. Good looking kick off the boot. And it just swings at the last minute. And through for yet another behind. These misses could be rather costly in the overall context of the game, Gary. Well, four points is not a good return for some of the forward work that they've been able to put up. But uh, on the other hand, though, Rod, I think Devonport Blues are struggling to work out who's playing up in that Clarence forward line. And so they could well take advantage of the situation. Good mark by Stocker, Rob. He's got plenty of height, raw boned. He's a big man, six foot eight. A courageous attempt by Lithgow, couldn't bring it in. Players diving in, umpires let it go, which was good. McCallum to Giles, and he's a very creative footballer, David Giles. Disposes of it well, and he finds a teammate, Paul Holdsworth. We've seen Giles run down the ground a number of times, and this is just a classic example of uh, pinpoint delivery. He's, in fact, playing on uh, Tony Lithgow on the wing, and so that's an unusual position for him. We haven't seen him play on the wing too often. Normally plays in defence, but running off that wing, setting up opportunities like this is going to be a big bonus for the Clarence side. He'll claim it. Was he going to Andrew Scott? Doesn't matter. Paul Holdsworth directly in front, puts it straight through the high diddle-diddle. So Clarence now get their first major on the board, and after a period where they've been frustrated because they've missed a few, Finally, some success. And we see Giles coming down again, just really composed in what he was doing. I suspect you're right, uh, Rob. He was probably looking for Scott coming further afield, but Holdsworth chipped in. But I think Lee McConnell would be a little bit concerned about the start. After 20 minutes, they've had five shots at goal and really have only the one goal to their name. And Devonport, on the other hand, have scored against the breeze. If Devonport did uh, rattle on another couple, then I think uh, the Clarence side have some concerns at quarter time. 
So, too, though, if the Roos get a little bit of a run on now, they could very quickly uh, bang on four or five. And uh, the fact that Devonport have really held sway in this first, the first half of this first quarter, that'd be something Peter Knights wouldn't want to see. Stocker, McLennan, Holdsworth there. Jones, oh, great interception, Richards. He then loses it. Jones. And perhaps a tad lucky to come out of that with a free kick. But he was the man going for the ball, making the play. Good vision over to Holm. Holm could almost have uh, gone on with it, but decided to go back and ping it in long. Oh, it's a shocking kick. Lithgow, who has started particularly well, has another possession. Shoots it out to Wade Anthony. I think Anthony may have started on the interchange bench and, and came on when McCoy went off. Over the top. No mark. That was the error of the ways. Three Clowns players up. Now Morrison reads it beautifully in towards Brett Smith. Good defensive work, Matthew Honey, is it? No, that's Probert. Probert gets it across. Cullen. Bad hand pass. Great intercept. Now the opportunity. Smith. Bit slow. Jaffray. Works his magic and then bombs away. The spell was broken rather rudely there, Gary Davidson, out of bounds on the fall. Well, some fairly ordinary disposals from the Devonport players. I thought Morrison's kick into um, to Brett Smith leading out from the goal square was uh, perhaps the first of a number of errors that have resulted in the ball ending up out of bounds on the fall. You've gone a bit further than Morrison. Honey up high, but Shane Smith stayed down. Windy here, so difficult for the players to judge. So it was a good effort from Shane Smith and Richardson on the burst. What a prospect. Six foot four, six foot five, 17. Well, it's great to see him leading with uh, lots of purpose. And uh, we haven't seen too much of him in that leading with purpose in, uh, in the recent games we've had them. But that, uh, that was a sign of things to come. If he can continue it over the course of the day, then he's going to be a big handful for Blair Brownless and certainly the best target that Devonport have got up across that half forward line. So Matthew Richardson has a good kick at goal. It's close. He's missed it just to the right. He's gone straight over the top of the post. So only two points in it. Winter, good looking kick in. Richie and Smith. Smith, who started the game particularly well. That was strong work. McCallum up towards full forward. Good defensive work, McCormick. Falls, though, for Holdsworth. Over to Taylor. Taylor shrugs the tackle, then gets himself into the pocket. Screws it back, but doesn't screw it back fast enough, so plenty of pressure out there. And Taylor looked like bre breaking free. Six scoring shots to three, but just three points the difference as we approach the 20-minute mark of the first quarter. Two behinds to Nick Taylor, too. McCormack's the man at fullback playing on Andrew Scott. Matthew Jones again. First up quarter, this one on the left boot. Well, Taylor has a chance to make amends here. Hello, this is no Monty. He'll kick from about 50 metres. Whoever's on Taylor, Gary, is giving him a heck of a lot of latitude. Well, I think you'd find that Taylor perhaps is playing as a forward pocket player and playing well up the ground, and uh, that's confusing the Devonport players, and that's what I was alluding to a moment ago when they had a shot for goal. Well, let's see if Taylor's done any better. He hasn't. Three behinds now. Yes, I think Peter Knights needs to uh, work out who, in fact, is playing. I, want him. I suspect it's uh, young McLennigan, Gus McLennigan, and so he needs to actually play up the ground too, and that's perhaps what... Uh, Lee McConnell is hoping for to bring McClellan further up the ground. Big fist down by Giles. Richards is there. Tries to get away from Holdsworth. Goes backwards. McClennan. Richards fiddling around with it. McClennan again. Working it well out of defence in the end. Giles and Stocker. Apps cleverly. Lithgow. Sheriff hasn't done much this quarter. In fact, his form over the last couple of weeks has been a bit disappointing, Brett Sheriff. In towards Smith. But that was badly kicked or right over the head and Darren Winter said thank you very much and clears it out to Cullen. So they work it up towards centre wing. Jones and Taylor, the dangerous duo. 
Matthew Jones gets it to Taylor. Clever little sidestep. Kicks to centre half forward. Honey. Yes, he's got it. Cullen made a contest of it, so he had to throw it away. Andrew Scott will up from full forward. He still goes. Forced to in the end, kick it hurriedly. It's a high, long bombing towards the forward pocket. Richie in towards full forward. No one at home. So McCormack should run it out of the back pocket. Can kick the centre wing. Once Brett Sheriff to turn around, that'll be a start to keep your eyes on the footy. But Giles was first there, and he'll boot Clarence back into attack. Wade allowed to run and spears it in towards half forward. Good defensive mark out there is taken by Clinton Dick. Thank you, Rob Waters. Now centre wing. Here's an opportunity. Lithgow. She's had a good first quarter. Ball holding up a little bit. Who's roving? Brown couldn't get the handle on it. McCallum. Shot out to Holm. Now the ruse can clear. Up towards Wade. Sheriff. Out number three to one. Giles. She does it on the bit, doesn't he? Just a very skillful player. Who then bombs away. This could bounce through. Dell. Oh, palms it down to Scott. Who goals? Bad defensive error from Chris Dell. He tried to thump it through for a rush behind. Didn't really hit it hard enough. Fell straight to Scott. And he said, thank you very much. Well, it all started in the back half of the ground for, for Devonport. There was some pretty ordinary running to the fall of the ball. And, of course, it was cleared. And then the good run by Giles attempted to kick a big torpedo on the run. Very difficult to do standing still, let alone on the run. But a bit stiff for, uh, for Dell, as you called, Rod. Really did, couldn't quite get enough meat on it to punch it over the boundary line. And really good effort by Scott to get back into the action and, uh, and clean up the sort of play that the Devonport Blues could do with on their forward line. Devonport would be wary of letting Clarence score another one or two goals in the later stages of this opening quarter. You'd have to give it to the Blues on this because there is a breeze blowing left of screen favouring the end to which Clarence are kicking. Wade Anthony now. Kicks to set a half forward. And that's been paid to Blair Brownless. Scott Wade. Still plenty of run left in the legs. He gets it back from Beerley. Can't control it. It's not out of bounds. He'll be disappointed with that. Shane McCoy off the field. For Devonport. For copping a high elbow. Smith. He's been a good player this quarter and great use of the ball that time and Richardson very impressive he's leading very positively on the forward line for the Blues doesn't quite know what to do with it now chips it in towards half forward oh Richie and uh, Holm co collide could have opened the door for the Blues but Page there any form of defense is good as he sockers it off the ground towards center wing Dix there Cullen he's played well over to Page up towards half forward, good passage. The ruse, Jackson's hand pass, not flash. Intercept and McLennan. His kick to Apps. What can he do? Move it on quickly is the call up to Richardson. The ball was touched off the boot. Smith can go over the top to Wade Anthony, who in turn could go to Morrison. Or up towards Jaffray, who takes a great diving mark in front of Darren Weta. Well, they look a better side when they really move the ball and look for both Richardson and Jaffray. And... Uh, I think the other thing that's missing and that could be added to their game quite easily was a good mark by Jeff Ray in the end, wasn't it? But the thing, if they could add a little bit of uh, ground play to their forward line, they would score more goals. I've had plenty of opportunities to stay with Clarence and, in fact, be in front going against this uh, two to three goal breeze. Now, Brett Jeff Ray has hooked it to the right or it had a bit of bend both ways, but not a, enough bend back to the left and uh, in the end a goal that they would have liked. It's a good diving mark. I don't think the Clarence players thought it was, but umpire fair... Correct. And the margin not all that great, Rob Waters. Ten points with a three-goal wind you'd think Clarence kicking with. Good overhead, Shane Smith. Plays a lot taller than his height suggests. Jaffray again. Well, twice he's uh he's outmarked Darren Winter. He's a bit frustrated. Good use of the body, and he is very, very strong overhead. And uh, importantly, he's going to be on his preferred left foot kicking. And uh, as Darren Winter is always there when uh, plenty of pushing and shoving going on, and he didn't let us down on that occasion. 
Clever play from Jeff Ray. Opens things up and he puts it through for a major for the Blues. So really, with this breeze, and it won't be a long quarter, Devonport have started very promisingly. Two very, very strong marks. The first one by Shane Smith, who we've come to appreciate over the few times we've seen him towards the end of the year as being a very, very good player for the Blues, and uh, particularly in the marking department, and that man that just kicked the goal. We've known over the years to have a very, very strong pair of hands off it. His kicking lets him down, but he's got an opportunity to be a real key forward for them today. And Pied Dwyer puts it down in the middle. Morrison underneath. Uh, plenty of heavy traffic. And one would suspect that rather than the Clarence players uh, abusing the umpires, that they concentrated their efforts to the football, they might be a little bit further ahead in this first quarter. Smith up high. That's Brett, Morrison, Cullen. He's been a good player. Out the back door it comes. Page, under pressure. Clever tap on. Oh, should be gone. Bealy, lucky to be allowed to get away with that because he hit it, held it for a long time, and then he gets the, the free kick goes Clarence's way. Probably a bit lucky there. Cullen. He's had plenty of possessions. That's a long roost. Up to the forward line. Two Clarence players up. No one down. Advantage rule paid. Half-back flank. Here's an opportunity for the Rose, though. Taylor again. Taylor into the forward pocket. Lithgow. Prominent. Cullen. Tackle. Couldn't get rid of it. And look at this. It's Paul Holdsworth. It's most unlike him to uh, carry on like that. I don't think I've ever seen him do that. I mean, that's consistent umpiring. It was the same decision that went Clarence's way in the centre of the ground about a minute ago. Now it's Richards, hurried kick out of defence. Richie, good use of the body. Oh, courageous stuff, Wade Anthony. And he'll boot it up towards centre wing, looking for Ricky Brown. Who doesn't gain possession, but Morrison does. Tries to get it back to Brown. But Matthew Honey was alert to that. He intercepted, then gets it back from Hulm. Good play from the big fellow to Jones. Here's Richie. And the rolling bulldozer goes to centre half forward. McCormick makes an issue of it. Ball spills free. We're about 30 out from Clarence's goal. But the Blues defence has done very well in this first quarter. Dean Cullen from centre half back gets it out of the trouble spot. Heads to half forward. If they can rove here, they're an opportunity. But the numbers favour Clarence at the moment. And Wade has been caught high. And pushed and shoves the man virtually half his age. So there is quarter time. Clarence and Devonport. Clarence kicking with the aid of a breeze. We anticipate to be worth about two or three goals. And Devonport have restricted their lead in the first quarter to three points. Good quarter by the Blues, Gary. And uh, you'd think, you know, psychologically having done that, if they can now make use of the wind and not expect the wind to do it all for them, they're in with a, a chance of having somewhat of a lead at half time. Well, I'd agree, Rod, and particularly if Peter Knights can do something about getting some uh, fall of the ball players in that forward line, whilst Richardson and Jeff Ray are good leading targets and good overhead, they really do need somebody to clean up when the ball hits the deck. Ricky Brown hasn't quite been able to get to enough of those contests. If there could be another player in that forward line who could do that, then I'm sure the Devonport Blues would have more on the board than the two goals, because I believe that they probably had the greater percentage of the play in their forward line, but couldn't quite convert, and I'm sure Peter Knights is looking to do that and ask people to get there. People like the Lithgows and those players who play across the midfield line, they're the players that should be hitting that half forward line and running towards goal. If you could build that into this team, well then I think that will support the work that's being done in the back half of the ground by the Richardson and the Dells and the young Harrison and McCormick. Well, I think while we're involved in footy, there's plenty else happening. Rob Waters in uh, the world of sport. Well, look at this, Rod. We've got the Gold Coast Marathon on at five tonight. Also, NBL basketball, the Devils back against the uh, South East Melbourne Magic, and the Devils must keep winning. And we've also got Super League tomorrow morning as the Rugby League heads towards the finals and the Sydney City to serve. So heaps happening in ABC Sport. Not forgetting English soccer. Do you love that stuff? Leeds in Wimbledon and Leeds, one of the top sides from last year. They're in contention. And American College football, Oklahoma versus Nebraska.
Okay, while we have this break, let's uh, let's go down to Rod Kilner, who's talking to the Clarence president, Roger Curtis. Roger, the Clarence club this year, after losing a lot of the, the very high-profile players last year, to be in this position, uh, second last round, it's a, a great compliment to the club. It's a bonus, really. It's a credit to the coaching staff and uh, the players that have come in to replace those that we've lost. Uh, last year at our AGM, we set our focus on getting the finances of the club right this year, and we knew that would involve sacrifices uh, in terms of our playing personnel. And uh, we hope to put a side on the field that would be competitive this year, and it's certainly been that. Well, in fact, looking at both of the sides playing out here, Clarence 4th, Devonport 5th, you could say pretty similar things about uh, both clubs at the beginning of the year, and uh, the young players for both clubs have, have done the uh, right thing. That's certainly true. The average age of our team is uh, 21, and uh, that all goes well for the future as far as we're concerned. Same with Devonport Football Club. And what about the future? The high-profile, big-money import seem to be... Uh, a thing of the past in many ways in TFL football. What's the Clarence Football Club doing to ensure the, the future of football in, in your uh, area? We've recognised two problems. One is that there's an ever-increasing challenge uh, to uh, young people as far as other sports are concerned. And secondly, the funds are diminishing all the time. In response to that, uh, the club uh, is about to launch uh, its own junior development foundation, which will involve... Uh, the uh, implementation of a strategic plan over the next five years to ensure the participation of young people on the eastern shore in Australian rules football. That's a bonus and uh, that is the way uh, I think most people believe football has to go in Tasmania. No question about that. Uh, as I say, if you look at the composition of the side this year, largely made, made up of locals and uh, provided that we uh, give them the financial and coaching support and equipment support into the future, We've got every reason to believe that we can continue to extract uh, good numbers from our local community. Thanks for talking to us. All the best for the rest of this afternoon and for the upcoming finals. Thanks very much, Rod. Appreciate Clarence President Roger Curtis talking with us there about the Clarence Junior Football Foundation. That would please you, Gary, considering you're the TFL's Junior Development Officer. Well, that's right, Rob, and uh, it's a great initiative by the Clarence Footy Club, and, uh, and I think most of the clubs in, have uh, really started to address what's happening with junior development in their districts, and, and that's pleasing to me, and I'm sure it's going to be pleasing to those parents who believe that uh, some opportunities can open up for, for their young, uh, young fellows as they come through the, the ranks of junior football, and I know that North Launceston in a few weeks are going to be launching their own junior football development foundation, and I suspect that uh, most of the clubs are really going to be looking at this area in, uh, in greater detail, and... I must uh, congratulate all of the 10 clubs for the support they've given me since I've been in the job in mid-April. They've been uh, terrific in the way they've gone about servicing the needs of junior football in the districts. OK, well, let's now have a look at some of the statistics collected through the season quickly. And we'll just have to race through these quickly because we've got Andy Bennett coming up soon. But Burnell, as ever, leads the kicks. He's had a great year. In handballs, Darren Denneman involved. Uh, Paul Atkins has gone to the Swans. And the Marks, Coffey of Burnie, the Hobart duo there, and Jack Ray and Richardson, they're two key forwards playing well. And Byron Howard with 30 to go for the big 100. I wonder if we can get there. Let's now get a quick word from Andy Bennett on what the coaches had to say at quarter time. Thanks, Rob. Uh, Lee McConnell was most critical of Clarence's use of the ball into their forward line. He believed they kicked too short uh, and tried to pinpoint too many passes when under pressure. And he was highly critical of their skill level, believing there were too many turnovers. And he was also critical of the way they went at the football. Too many times they tapped it on when they could have taken clear possession. Uh, Peter Knights, on the other hand, was quite pleased with his side's defensive effort, but he uh, uh, urged his players to follow the ball into the forward line and get to the fall of the ball, put the ball in front of Richardson and Jaffray to give them a chance to mark the ball and to fight hard to get in front. The word on Shane McCoy is that he has a suspected broken cheekbone. Well, what a shame, and I think we called it at that time, that, uh, well, what can you say about that? Not all that flash, is it? Well, Clarence to go into... Attack for the first time. That was Giles in the centre. Jones, well done. He's an impressive youngster. Not much of him, but very talented. Oh, gee, that's not the best of kicks into the breeze, is it? In front of the pack, Morrison does well. Couldn't get away with it. Page, kick and hope stuff. A bit more desperation out there from Clarence at the moment as they realise that they've got to work harder into the wind. A 
Three points the difference here at Bell Reef. Lovely day. Who would have thought that after yesterday? Andrew Scott with strength grabs possession, blazes away at goal, and unfortunately misses everything. Very versatile footballer, Andrew Scott. Can play at either end. He has kicked goals in a number of the matches we've seen this year when he's had a forward role. Now here's Brett Smith on the lead. Scott Wade going over the mark. And getting 50. That was good umpiring by Gene Fair because there's no doubt in my mind that Scott Wade was delaying tactics there and uh, giving his players further up the field a chance to man up. I think Scott Wade's too happy about it. He's certainly let Fair know, that's umpire Fair, that he's pretty displeased with that decision. Ricky Brown now in the forward pocket on the left boot can bend it back. It's close. It's just had too much hook on it. And back there was Stuart Probert. Goes back out towards the attacking side. And Jaffray backs back, almost grabbed it. Thrown out by Cullen. Likewise by Honey to Jones. And they're out of trouble. Here's McCallum. So McCallum up towards half forward, kicking under pressure. And to the Devonport side. Doing well at the moment. Young Harrison's kick probably wasn't all that flash up towards Sheriff. But uh, really Sheriff has got to lift his game uh, an awful lot if he's a potential AFL player, Gary. Well, he does, and I think they probably need to get him onto the ball and into the action, but uh, young Harrison should have kicked the ball long there rather than that little 15-metre chip. Definitely the wrong option. And by fair, and Brett Smith giving away inches, gets it down. Cullen, Wade, Page in a corner. Shane Smith over to Brown. Gee, he's played well. That's Smith to Brown. No one at home for the Blues. Oh, Luck's a fortune stocker. Couldn't turn. Once again, it was our old favourite, the Queen Mary. Not being able to turn in the do-it. And Darren Winter running the ball away for the Ruse. Moves OK, Stocker, when he gets going. He just takes a while to get moving. That's all, like a few of us. Now, here's Tony Lithgow, who taps it up towards Stocker. In the forward pocket, here's Giles. Try some fancy stuff. Took his time and then kicked it out of bounds. And on the full... So this is the dress rehearsal of the elimination final in many ways. Jones on the intercept. Judge that to a nicety. Hugs the grandstand side here at Bell Reef. And Clarence free kick after Devonport took the marks. Going to Paul Holdsworth. And the vice captain. As the kick ho holding up in the breeze. Dell couldn't take the mark. Hand passed out here towards Scott Wade. Here's Rick Honey. Sweet little kick towards Page. Jackson on the left boot. In towards full forward. It's close. Just went across the face. And another behind to Clarence. Both teams finding it difficult to score majors here at Bell Reef. First score of the quarter. And just looking at the umpires, umpires Fair and Dwyer, Gary, I think they've done a very good job so far in the game, but I notice that they're very much sticking to the centre corridor with their umpiring. They're not getting close to the, to the play at all. I think that's the nature of umpiring these days with the two umpire system, Rod. Now Harrison, that's a more positive hand pass. And Blues out of trouble, up towards the half forward line. They really need something on the forward line, the Blues at the moment. Good tackle apps. Morrison fighting with Page. Page does well and forces the ball over. Four points the margin. We've been playing about uh, five minutes of the second quarter. The four margin, four points in favour of the Ruse. Devin Port slightly into attack here. Shane Smith, who's been very good again. Chips it in towards full forward. Richardson beaten by Blair Brownless on that occasion, but that's been a good duel. Well, it's a good learning duel for young Richardson. He's uh, shown a lot of promise over the course of the year and has played some good football in the Teal Cup, but to come up against a good player like Brownless is certainly going to test his medal today. In the profile, Brownless suggested that his most admired sportsman is coach Lee McConnon. Perhaps ensuring a place in the final side, I would suggest. Might be a bit tongue-in-cheek. It's an excellent uh, little mini profile of Blair Brownless. He's come up with some interesting things. More of that later. Favourite night spots in David's Park. Now here's Ricky Brown in towards full forward. And he's missed to the right. Good character, Blair Brownless. But Devonport doing well, but only four goals in the game so far. 
which is somewhat surprising, surprising given, given the conditions. Only a two or three goal breeze, but uh, the football is certainly not muddy. The ground is very, very good. Good mark by Probert. Off he goes to Jones and up towards Holdsworth and takes it in front of Richards. And that's 50. That's a little bit uh, unlucky, I would have thought, Gary. Not quite as obvious as the uh, Scott Wade one. Well, I think it's good umpiring, personally. I think the, uh, the more we start putting that into our game here in Tasmania, I think we're going to have a more disciplined bunch of players playing the game and we can just get on and play the game at a breakneck speed and hopefully lift our standards with good umpiring and good football combined. It's obviously the Norm Gregory policy for the week. No time wasting in the game. Dish out a few 50 metres, boys. As long as they're consistent throughout the day, no argument from me. Holdsworth. Good kick, good goal. That's a team lifter for the Ruse. And Holdsworth kicks his second. And an important little psychological edge, maybe, as we approach the seven minute mark of the second quarter. You can see it. A good mark by uh, Probert, fed it off to McCallum. And then the good pass out in front of Holdsworth. There's no doubt that uh, Richards was frustrated that Holdsworth got away from him. And there you see the push to hopefully save some time so that he's got his teammates could get further down into the back half. and cover up some of those Clarence forwards but uh, certainly a very very good shot from goal from Holdsworth he doesn't miss too many opportunities but very very good skills Smith and Honey one by Smith Richie to McCallum Has McCallum had a good year with the ruse gutsy mark by Paul Richards underneath a high one so Devonport need to answer now they like to be more productive with this long, big breeze behind them Jaffray on the lead he went underneath it could have got a bit of a shove Morrison roving, has got to try and beat two or three of them. Ooh, he's caught did you by see Darren that? Winter. And he's getting the free kick. Now, the umpire saw that. He's given a free kick. Why isn't it a report? Gary? I'm just waiting to see it on replay, uh, Rod, so that uh, we can see. I'm not certain what the report might be. Was he trying to knock the ball away or knock his arms <laughs> away from the ball? <laughs> Only Darren Winter could answer that for us. <laughs> Well, Morrison's got the footy, which is the important thing. And he's on a tight angle. It'd be a good kick. It's close. It's gone out of bounds on the full. It's not close at all. But the Devonport players went up in some sort of celebration then. Well, I thought the goal umpire was going back and having a good look at it. Well, Darren Winter hasn't mucked around. He decides to go across the ground now. And it could work for Clarence here. In fact, it will. It's a lovely kick from Winter. Found John Cullen. Can carry it up to half back. Oh, he's taken his time. Scott Wade has 20 metres. Kent Jackson's got some space too, and he's got the footy. Good football then from Clarence. They took it from one end to the other against the breeze. Admittedly, without too much difficulty. And with three kicks, a good play by Winter, just taking his time to pick the right option, and uh, he certainly did that. And then good use of the football by Scott Wade. So Kent Jackson fires at goal and puts it through. So Clarence doing very well against the breeze now. And they've opened up a very handy break. Nine and a half minutes into the second quarter. Fairly dangerous time for the Devonport Blues now because unless they start to score here, we see the pass from Wade just nicely placed over the top of Dell, who was caught betwixt and between and couldn't quite put enough pressure on and very good finish by Kent Jackson. But as I was going to say, very dangerous time for Devon, the Devonport Blues because they need to rattle on a couple of goals because if Clarence continue in the way they are now, then the, the Blues could be in fact steering from not having a, a two or three goal lead at half time, but in fact trailing by that same margin. And with having Clarence having the uh, wind in the third quarter, Back in the centre, Stocker gets it down, but here they come. Richie bursts his way through. Good strength, Scott. Yes, two marks, two grabs. No, must have been touched on the way through. Cullen, desperation, only as far as Richie. The Ruse just starting to get their game together, one senses. Wade pings away and has just missed. But the Ruse starting to roll. They're starting to get their running game going, Gary. And this man we can see on screen has been left loose uh, far too much for my way of thinking. And uh, Peter Nice needs to think about who can actually play on Scott Wade because he certainly is one of the playmakers for the Ruse. Covering plenty of territory, Wade. 
in the shadows underneath the grandstand here. Clarence keep it. Kick it up towards half forward line and Paul Holdsworth in front takes a beauty. Probably too far out to score, but he'll bomb it in long. Customary good kick from Holdsworth. Dell was up high, touched it on the way through. And another behind, but importantly for Clarence, they're doing all the attacking against the breeze here at lovely Bell Reeve, which is in fantastic condition considering the awful weather we had in Hobart during the week. Shane Smith the target, but look, they're outnumbered three to one at the fall of the ball. Cullen can't quite get there. McLennan with strength does well, but then he has no options. Cullen in trouble. McCallum over the top. Holdsworth flick on. Ritchie under pressure. And Dell taking a mark in the last line of defence. But you just sense this next five or so minutes could be crucial to the outcome of the game because the Roos really applying the pressure and the Blues not paying, paying particularly well. Honey, Matthew steals it from his opposite number there. And Devonport free kick. Umpire gesturing it was too high and Wade Anthony Peter Ritchie suggesting something about the eyesight I think playing against his old club Peter Ritchie the man who came out of the suburban football league in Melbourne after being recruited by Devonport last year but he's in the Ruse colours today and here he has the footy good hand pass out wide to Scott McCallum an approving player for Clarence Empire certainly letting it go. McCallum goes again. Good work. Gets it up to Paul Holdsworth. And they've got it at centre-half forward. In short to Scott. And the caveman's got it. 25 metres out from goal. And he's got now the chance to kick their fifth. Well, he's a great leader from the goal square, isn't he, Andrew Scott? And, of course, the pass from Holdsworth made his job that much easier. And uh, he's really becoming uh, Mr Versatile for this Clarence side. Can play very good defensively on a, on a good forward. And then can move in and do things like this at the other end of the ground. Just wait on the goal umpire here. He's put it through. So this has been an excellent performance from Clarence in their second quarter. They were facing down the barrel at quarter time, having a lead of only three points. And with Devonport coming with the breeze, but they've kicked the last three. We've seen Holdsworth kick uh, goals himself from uh, good strong marks and good, good positive shooting at goal. And we've seen that beautiful pass coming to Andrew Scott. And so... Paul Richards, who hasn't done a bad job on Holdsworth up until this stage, needs to really uh, clamp down on Holdsworth to reduce his effectiveness on this forward line. Richie. Jones has it now to Wade. Gee, they're getting their running game going, getting loose men as a result. The ball will go a little bit too hard for Taylor to the boundary line. And as I said a couple of minutes ago, Gary, you just sense that this could be the pivotal point in the game at the moment. They're doing very well out of the centre bounces, Clarence, and that's really where they're setting up their attacks. Apps having a trot on the ball. Gee, that's dangerous. Stocker, you need to go. David v. Goliath. And that could almost be worth 50 if the umpires are going to be consistent. That was umpire Dwyer. The other two 50s meted out by umpire Fair. And Richardson was deemed to have nudged his opponent in Brownless out. That's what I'm talking about, consistency, Gary. If the umpires are going to do it, they need to get together. And so we're both going to do it. Holdsworth over the top with strength. Off to Honey. The Roos are running. Half forward. Jones showed courage. Jackson. Oh, good gather. Off to Giles. Another goal, Roos. You're looking good. Fourth spot looking in their keeping at the moment. Well, that's the difference uh, from one end of the ground to the other. The Devonport Blues in the first quarter didn't have this sort of running to the fall of the ball in their forward line. And you can see the crumbs picked up by Jackson, speared the hand pass out from Giles coming off his wing. And, of course, we know that he's such a great deliverer of the football and he had no pressure at all on him to, to drive that one through and, and kick their fourth for the quarter. And the Devonport Blues in uh, 15 to 16 minutes of football have only been able to add one point from the, to their quarter-time score. And that's with the breeze. They look ferocious with their intent at the ball, but here's a chance now for Devonport. Morrison, little kick was sort of half smothered. Bealey off to McCallum now. The Clarence defence standing firm here at Bell Reeve in front of their parochial home crowd support. And we'll have a boundary throw in. In between wing and half forward. 
Not a big crowd here. But that looks reasonable. Shane Smith. Jackson, uh, rather, Brown. Great hand pass from Lithgow. Richardson running into an open goal. Has missed to the left. They needed that one. Two behinds for Matthew Richardson. They need to get going pretty soon, Devonport, because Clarence will be kicking with the breeze in the third quarter and could win it from there. Yeah, you reckon that'd be you need to be pretty close at half time to have much of a chance. Richardson, what a mark! Put the inspector gadget arm out and dragged it in. Look at that. Great mark over P Peter Ritchie. Now Richardson looking for his options up forward. This is where they run into a bit of trouble. He's gone for Smith, but it's all the ruse. And they can raffle it. And Brownless taking seniority as the cue. Marks in front of Probert. But it's completely different if you watch the way Clarence worked the ball into attack. They realise, perhaps, Gary, that they haven't got, with Adams out of it, uh, maybe the tall marking target. So the key to success is the quick movement of the ball into that forward line. I'd agree, Rod, and I think that Devonport forward line needs a lot of reorganisation to create a bit of space. Well, they haven't had much possession in this second quarter, and it's been a bit of a worry for them. Wade Anthony now, though. Up towards four for Richardson. The hand on the back could have given away a free kick. Went a bit too early. Lithgow's been a quiet oh. second quarter. Beautiful footy from Lithgow. In towards four forward, Jaffray. Yes. I thought he dropped the mark. And then he kicks the goal. All clear, says the umpire. So an important goal for the Devonport Blues. Jaffray second after a fantastic bit of footy from Tony Lithgow. But Peter Knights doesn't look too happy. Well, I'm not surprised either because it's been a very, very ordinary uh, performance. But uh, this man with a very, very strong hands, I in fact thought it had got hit chip it and let the ball go through. But uh, just put the mitts up and was able to take it. But one goal, one since quarter one goal two sorry since quarter time is not a great return in 16 or 17 minutes of football and they really need to accelerate and particularly get this center clear see how they go this time oh honey the big thump up towards half forward taylor he's played a very good game today out wide to page look at the difference in the build-up onto the two forward lines the quick movement of the ball means that clarence could have raffled it in the end they stand back and say you take it back into the center over they go Scott looking for the free kick and he's going to get it. Oh dear. I think he made, I'll say this, he made sure the umpire saw it. Whether it was a real Richie Didge free kick, I'm yet to be convinced. I'll need to see it again. But Andrew Scott has provided a focal point up there. He's kicked two, looking for his third and has put it through the high diddle diddle so the quick answer to the clarence side that was good but was she a rigid edge free kick gary davidson well there was a little bit of indecision from both honey and uh, ken jackson uh, i think honey was looking for a free kick but certainly uh academy award stuff from andrew scott and uh, umpire dwight wasn't all that far away but it really came from a great center clear by clarence they are dominating the center bounces the Devonport Blues just haven't got enough strength in there or enough committed players to really clear the centre. Well, a good bounce from the umpire. Matthew Honey doing a good job, number 10 in the ruck. Here's Richie, another strong player in the middle, and they move it forward again through Taylor. So Nick Taylor oh. has Rick Honey all on his own, and it's all falling apart for Devonport. Another player <laughs> loose, and Paul Holdsworth will kick now from 10 metres out. And really... They've been a bit disorganised in defence, Gary Devonport, in the second quarter. Well, they have, and of course, you're always going to be under enormous pressure when the ball comes out of the centre, centre bounce, as it did from uh, from Richie that time. But as I mentioned earlier, uh, Paul Richards has done quite a good job on Holdsworth, but uh, we see now Holdsworth lining up for his third. Perhaps it's time for a change. Well, three to Andrew Scott, and two to Paul Holdsworth. Should have been three. Gee, I'd already marked that down as a goal. I didn't look. Well, we, we expect him to kick better than that, and uh, certainly Paul Holdsworth would be very disappointed in not finishing off, and particularly after such a good build-up after the centre bounce. Well, it's dig deep time for the Blues. If they want to stay in this game, they are going to have to do something and do it pretty quickly. Shane Smith in towards Brett. He's had a fairly quiet game today, Brett. Out wide they go. 
Clinton Dick has also uh, had a few grabs, but not his usual prolific gathering. Richardson, good use of the body, says the umpire. When others, the Clarence fans adjacent, said it was a push in the back, but Richardson kicks long. He, he got onto that nicely. Where are the flyers? Stocker. And the tall man plucks it down under not very much opposition from the Clarence defence. Darren Winter in earnest discussion. Just towers over them, doesn't he? <laughs> yes. Well, there was a little bit of handiwork amongst the pack too as the ball was coming in. It was certainly a very, very long kick from Matthew Richardson. And this is a very important kick for this young man because uh, Clarence are just getting too far away. And Peter Knights would be worried that his side can't reply with three or four goals in the last 10 minutes. I trail by 29 points and never did he look like kicking that from the moment it left the boot, Gary. Well, it looked as though I was going to swing back, but gee, that's a very, very important miss, or, or a poor miss. I shouldn't call it an important miss, but it, uh, a crucial one for the Devonport Blues because they need three or four quick goals. Brownless on the lead after the kick from Darren Winter. He's thumped away from him. Brett Sheriff has been extremely quiet today. He doesn't gather it there. Shane Smith just about their best player. Wade Anthony now. Back to Tony Lithgow. Shane Smith looking for support. Plenty of Clarence Guernseys around the ball here. Good hand pass out towards Bealey. They kick it out of trouble. But Dean Cullen backs back. Keeps his eyes on the footy. Poor kick to centre half forward. No one at home for the Devonport Blues. And Scott Wade runs it out of defence. Probably took a little too long, but kicks it up towards Taylor, who was crunched. And because of that, he'll come away with a free kick. Ball holds was worth his being reported for striking Cullen. So that could be a very important moment tonight for Paul Holdsworth, uh, Gary Davidson. Well, it's, uh, it's surprising. You know, I've known Paul Holdsworth for a long time and uh, some of his attitudes to some of the decisions in different parts of the game today have left me quite astonished. All right, here's Taylor now to centre-half forward. Scott's on the lead again. Doesn't drag it in. Dick overruns the ball. They just seem far more committed, Clarence. They've got more numbers around the football and the contest at the other end of the ground. I counted up eight players to Devonport Blues too and I think that's been indicative of the way Clarence have played this second quarter. Should that free kick have been reversed before if Holdsworth was reported? I think that was a report for off the ball rather than in the context of the action, Rod. Too many spectators, Devonport, at the moment. As down is, who's that? Nick Taylor, is it? I think it could be Taylor. Looks as though it could be a shoulder injury. That would be a cruel blow. There it is. As he runs through. And yes, I think he's hit the ground as he was tackled on that shoulder. That's bad luck because he has been playing a very good game for the Roos today, Gary. Well, he has. He had a very, very good first quarter. He's been picked up by McLennan, McLennan and he played him a little closer. But uh, I'm not certain whether it's in shoulder or whether, in fact, he might have been winded. I think it's more than wind. The way he's holding, they're holding his arm. I suspect it could be a broken collarbone. That left collarbone. Yeah. yeah. Well, that is a blow for Clarence because he has played fairly well and particularly given them a lot of bite and a lot of pace up in that forward line. And a, I suppose has won all now, Rod. Yes. Yes. So uh, though one was a legitimate tackle, the other one would question the legitimacy of it. Lithgow bursts his way out. Brownless, oh, good backing of the judgment from Blair. Brownless bombs it up forward. Harrison high. Didn't quite gather it in the second time. Hurry kick Morrison. Dick can switch it across towards Sheriff. She's half-hearted to me, Sheriff. He's not really having a, a real hot dip for mine for the Blues. And he's got a few mates out there. That's why they're behind on the scoreboard. That's more like the Brett Sheriff that has won a, an invitation to play AFL football. Wade Anthony in towards half forward. They're just too static coming into attack. They're not giving their forwards much hope at all, the Blues. Shane Smith, he's sat on and then he's penalised. Bit stiff. Richie jumped into the middle of his back. So Peter Richie, just to centre half forward. Meant for Scott. Scott took his opponent, McCormick, underneath the ball and it lands with Paul Holdsworth. And he's number taken. Oh. There's two of them out here for Clarence. Wade or Jones. 
Jones leaves it for Scott Wade, who's had a good day. I reckon he'll have a dip, Rob. I think he'll bomb it up there long. Interesting to see if he can make the distance. I don't think it'll have the carry. High leap is required. Brown in towards Page off the ground. What a kick. Oh, it's a goal. A fresh air shot from David Page. Who really, I think, has done a good job in this second quarter. He's quietened down David Morrison, who was dangerous, dangerous particularly early in the game. But Harrods have really stolen a march on Devonport here. Well, it's particularly good news for you if you've got a tagger that can uh, thwart the efforts of the uh, the best player from the opposition side. But if he can pick up possessions and importantly kick goals, well, then you've really got a player giving you uh, perhaps more than what you'd expect from the start of the game when you gave him first game, you gave him the tagging role. Morrison up towards half forward. Apps on a pretty dirty day. And that kick probably typifies it. Page goes off the ground after kicking the goal a few seconds ago defensively and puts it over. Been a very disappointing quarter by Devonport. We saw them go down to Hobart by having an absolute miss in the third quarter. That cost them the game. The other three quarters, though, are competitive. This has been a great disappointment. I'm sure behind locked doors at halftime, Peter Knights will give them a proper pull-through because... They, are, I would say there is about uh, 12 players out there that aren't having a real red-hot go. Conversely, Clarence are really uh, have played some very committed football this quarter and kicking their six goals. Six goals, four, in fact, to, uh, to just one goal, three. And uh, that is a huge difference given that they're going against this two or three goal breeze. We might go down to Andy Bennett when we get an opportunity soon just to get an assessment of the breeze here at Bell Reef just to see if it has dropped at all or whether this second quarter revival by Clarence has been entirely due to their good work. The Blues have got a kick on the half forward line so down to Andy Bennett shortly. Richardson was up high, groundless claiming the mark, took a while to get rid of it and there'll be a bounce. Andy what's the breeze situation? The breeze is still favouring the uh, to the end uh, the river end to the right of screen but it has dropped considerably and in fact it's probably blowing uh, a bit more across the ground now but only be one or two goals in it. All right thanks Andy. The breeze favouring the end to which Devonport are kicking left of screen bombing towards full forward. Battle between Winter and Jaffray and that's out on the full by app so it'll be a kick to Clarence. That's the other way. Must have been winter. I w agree with you. I thought it was the the Tevenport player that kicked it off the ground. I'd like to see that one again, Rob. Well, the has done well here. He's knocked it over the line. Now he's having a shot at goal, and he's put it through for a goal. I think. No, he's just missed it. So can't be much play left in this second quarter, and Devonport would be kicking themselves for wasting this breeze. I know someone else probably at halftime that'll be kicking them as well. Scott Wade. Always a beautiful kick of the footy. Out towards Giles, who had a very good first quarter, but I haven't seen much of him in this quarter. Plenty of pressure out there. And a little bit of pushing and shoving. And Probert will get the free kick as Devonport really... I think know that they've dug an enormous hole for themselves and are going to be awfully lucky to get out of it. Richie up to half forward. Oh, Jackson does well, does brilliantly. In towards the leading Scott on the volley. Taps it out to the side, looking for Page. Brett Smith in there. It's up for grabs at the moment. Back into the centre, Wade. Oh, outdone by Anthony. And that's better use of the footy. But Clarence are the ones running hard at the ball. Giles does well. Over the top to McCallum, to Brownless. They're linking the game so much better. Up high to Honey. Man in front should be paid. Harrison. Pretty courageous mark by Harrison. Stood his ground. And of course, uh, whilst Honey might have had some purchase on the football, the decision is always going to go to the man in front. Young Teal Kappa, young Ben Harrison, attracting a bit of interest from some AFL scouts. Oh, what a leap from 
And I Clarence player there. And I suspect this young man might have attracted a bit of uh, attention too from the scouts. He uh, got that ability to come into the game and uh, once he's really committed his mind to really going hard at the football, he's very, very hard to beat. Another 50. Well, he'll line up now from 50 metres out. So a few fit. We've probably seen more 50s today than we have in the last four or five games. I think that's the Norm Gregory direction for the week. To get the umpires to crack down on that sort of time-wasting uh, or roughing up affair. Well, Jackson comes in. Goal umpire has a few problems with his footing. Smile about it and then register the two fingers. So Clarence now have again kicked further away. It's been all the ruse in this second quarter after they led by only three points. Here's that great leap again. And that's the reason Ken Jackson got 50 metres. It's probably not a bad idea coming into the finals. There seems to be a bit of finals football mentality when a lot of these things start to happen more often once the finals get, get down the track and uh, teams are under pressure to maintain their uh, place in the race for the flag. And so probably not a bad idea. It has been a direction from Norm, Norm Gregory. Well, you get no argument from me, Gary. If they're consistent with the application of it, uh, terrific. Would the clubs be told that? Not exactly certain, Rob, but I'm certainly in favour of it because it's going to increase the discipline aspect within teams. If they can play good football and get the ball moving on, it's going to be the advantage of Tasmanian standards. Gee, they've got oh, loose men everywhere, haven't they? Off the centre wing. Brown. Sheriff uh, telegraphing it. Cullen. Been best game I've seen Cullen play for Clarence for uh, a long, long time. Richie. They're starting to fiddle now, aren't they? Cullen, good vision. Andrew Scott on the hooter. Is he too far out to score? He's going to have a ping. And it's been an excellent quarter from Clarence. I don't think he's going to quite have the distance, is he? No. And at half time. A very impressive Clarence. They lead 64 to 25. Uh, 39 points is the margin in favour of Clarence. And I certainly wouldn't have predicted that score line at quarter time, Gary Davidson. In fact, I would have said that if they kept going the way they were, it would have been Devonport with a three or four goal advantage at the major break. Well, that man on our screen, Lee McConnell, would be very, very pleased with the... Uh the quarter of football because uh, Devonport certainly in my mind played the better football in the first quarter against the Breeze but uh, to see such a big score of 7-4 uh, in the second quarter against that 1-2 to goal Breeze that Andy Bennett mentioned, mentioned it to us is a great effort and uh, whilst Paul Sheen there on your screen hasn't had an opportunity to have a run Lee McConnell's going to be going into this uh, 15 minute break at half time to really impress upon his players the importance of that psychological advantage of uh, Keeping it going and having uh, the advantage of going down the hill and having the breeze for the third quarter is going to be one where they could either take full toll or, in fact, sit back and see the Devonport Blues catch up and then we'd be in for a big last quarter. Who did you select uh, North Hobart playing South Lobster's number Junction, Gary? I would suggest that North Hobart, given the form that they're in and have won eight or nine on the trot, would be uh, doing it fairly well. You can say, Rob. We've got news that South Launceston lead at this stage by 79 points. Good heavens, sir. Perhaps it might have been something in the water on the way up in the bus this morning, but uh, that's a pretty important uh, result for North Hobart because they are only on top by the barest of percentage and uh, a, win to, a win to North Launceston today would, uh, would see North Launceston go on top. Very interesting. That's the situation. South Launceston upsetting North Hobart at this stage and Clarence doing it very convincingly over Devonport. They lead by 39 points at halftime. We're going to take a little bit of a break and go to sports break. Welcome back to Bell Reeve. It's halftime here. Clarence is back on the field and Devonport are just coming back onto the ground now. The umpires are out there and the good news is for all the Clarence supporters in the elimination final preview, I suppose we could call it, and after a seven goal second quarter against the breeze they've really opened up this game and now devonport have plenty of work to do leading goal kickers to half time scott's kicked three jackson and holdsworth two each and jaffray really the only thing that's been on offer up in the blues forward line 
other games. North Launceston just in front of Burnie at West Park. Always difficult. The Battle of the Wooden Spoon. Sandy Bay 15 points in front of Glenorchy. Wait for it. The bottom one there. Look at that. South Launceston killing North Hobart. And Hobart, as one would expect them to do, leading New Norfolk by 35 points. In the AFL, Hawthorne pretty comfortably ahead of Richmond. Carlton well on top of Footscray. Geelong well on top of Brisbane. So the players just doing their warm-ups before we get underway here in the second half. Andy Bennett's been in both rooms. And Andy, what did the coaches have to say during the half-time break? Well, thanks, Rob. Uh, not surprisingly, I was unable to get into uh, the Devonport rooms. Peter Knights had closed the doors there. And the atmosphere around the place was very quiet and very sombre. Um, I did hear one little uh, glimmer of his talk. He, uh, he urged his players to put their eyes fair and square on the ball, fair and squarely on the ball, and simply to get in front. And uh, I, I would think uh, that'd be a pretty good place to start. He must also be concerned with Devonport's lack of, di uh, lack of discipline. Their uh, 50 metre penalties with two or three against them in that quarter. Their lack of aggression, their inability to man up. Lee McConnell, on the other hand, was very positive. He was pleased with their use of the ball. He urged them to keep moving the ball quickly. Pleased with their aggression at the ball, but it reminded them very strongly they were only halfway through the game and it reminded them that last time they played Devonport in Devonport, Devonport got their noses in front right at the end, so this game needed to be played right out. Thanks very much, Andy Bennett. Clarence straight into attack after the resumption of play here. And Devonport will get it here on centre wing. Wade Anthony from centre wing up towards Morrison. And outnumbered here by Jones. Mark wasn't paid, so he feeds it off to Daniel Holm. Plenty of time to get out of that tight corner. Wade in space again. He's been pr tremendous today. And Richie has it now, and that's far, far too easy. That's really one of the reasons why they have got such a handy lead. They've been able to use the ball very, very well into their forward line, Clarence. And uh, if Jackson kicks this one, it's going to make it awfully diff difficult psychologically for the Devonport Blues players because they would have uh, copped a bit of a roasting from Peter Knights and would have expected to start the third quarter much better than they have. So Jackson from about 50 metres directly in front has put it straight through. What a lovely kick. Three goals to Kent Jackson. He's enjoying this. And Clarence have really opened things up now. The lead, 45 points. And for Devonport fans, if you don't know who number 54 is, Wade Anthony's had a change of Guernsey during the halftime break. Gee, it's got all the earmarks of somewhat of a rout now, Gary. Well, it has because that was a great, uh, a great setup from uh, some very good use of the football. Well, Smith couldn't get to the contest because umpire Dwyer was there, and he recovers in the end up to half forward. Richards, Brownless. Brownless the fist down. Holm, Jones, Giles. They're teaming so much better together. Giles took too long. Lucky to get away with that. Morrison in a corner. And he sees Sheriff. Sheriff's got to get more involved in this game. Hand pass under pressure. Giles out to Ritchie. Cleverly over to Holdsworth. Holdsworth up towards half forward. Jackson. Action Jackson has taken the mark. And a real will of the wisp in the forward pocket. A danger man for Devonport is Kent Jackson. Look at that for a pass from Holdsworth. Did it ever so well. Jackson, three goals and one behind to his credit. From 40 out, has now got four goals and one behind to his credit. Two quick goals to Clarence to start the third quarter off. And the mood rather ominous one would suggest so far as this game is concerned. Well, it all came as a result of a mistake from Brett Sheriff who's been moved onto the half back line on to pick up Paul Holdsworth and uh, of course his handball error was very well uh, handled by uh, Giles, Ritchie and finally Holdsworth poking the ball down to, to Kent Jackson and uh, Peter Knights wouldn't be a very very ha happy man at this stage of the quarter. Oh, Ritchie bursts out of the middle, can bomb it long up towards full forward, Jackson! Oh, he almost got it, he's been paid! What an electrifying player Ken Jackson is. He did it against Hobart earlier in the year when he just took the game by the scruff of the neck. And he's doing that here at the moment, although, Was did he it? hang on enough? Well, he didn't hang on to it long enough for mine, and, uh, and I think Gene Fair anticipated him bringing the ball down because his view of the, uh, the second or third grab was obscured. Here he is for goal number five. He's put it through. 
So Kent Jackson, in about four minutes of footy, has almost put the game beyond doubt. He's kicked three now in this third quarter, five for the match, and Big Richie bulldozing his way through the middle. That's a pretty terrifying sight if you're on the other side. Well, they've won out of the centre square all day, and I think that's been the major concern. I don't think the players in there for the Devonport Blues are quite strong enough. Uh, Peter Knights has persevered with the Smith boys. Morrison, of course, has been in there. Ricky Brown's in there now. But in fact, at the start of this qu third quarter, they only had three players in there. I think there was a bit of confusion as to who was in. For mine, I'd like to see some stronger ball getters in that centre square bounce. And from the centre this time, Morrison bundled aside. Honey. Over it goes to Richie. Page offloads quickly to Honey. In towards half forward. Lithgow couldn't get it. Cullen in a corner. Hob gets out of it well. Up towards full forward. Holdsworth well tackled. Holding the ball in, and indeed, could almost have been penalised because he was holding the ball in. He was being held, but umpired why I didn't see it that way. No. Chance for Clarence, perhaps again, Smith. McCormick, out towards the half-back line. Well played. Over the top they go. Lithgow now with the chance. Up towards Richardson. Wade and Richardson. You got a push in the back, did Wade? None too subtle about that. From the raw-boned Matthew Richardson and the experienced Scott Wade. As the free kick defensive side of the centre. Now with a trusty left boot. Up towards Jones. And over the pack, Jackson, totally out position, takes it with ease. Kent Jackson. Doing everything right in this third quarter. To Cullen, all oh, that was a bit risky to Wade. A clever play from John Cullen. He's got all the skills in the world. And what a beautiful kick to Rick Honey, who will swing now on this left boot, go for home from about 45, and hit the post. But Clarence really right on top of this game now. It's important that Devonport hit back in terms of uh, a couple of weeks' time. That's what we talked about earlier in the game. The winner gets a huge psychological advantage. And thus far, I'd say it's hitting Clarence's way. Morrison. They're just kicking and hoping, aren't they, at the moment, Devonport? No run at all in their game. Harrison. Adam Richards, who's come on the ground. Can't get near that one. And in front of the Clarence Cricket Club. That's the place to be. In the afternoon. The throw-in will take place. Honey and Smith. Richie, beautifully fed out to McCallum. Over the top he goes. Giles. Holdsworth back to Giles. Wayne Anthony there and takes the ball over the boundary line. It was looking as though it was going to be a good build-up, but the hand pass from Paul Holdsworth was just too quick and too hard. And, of course, David Giles couldn't grab it. And uh, whilst only going for it one hand, it didn't give him the best chance, but it was far too hard. 83 plays 25 in favour of the Ruse as Sheriff in all sorts of trouble. Kent Jackson, a masochist, decides, what about that for deliberate ump? And no was the reply. Well, the Ruse looking to get another one on the board. Brown versus Brett Smith. Brown wins it. Has his hand pass smothered. Comes back to Holdsworth. Oh. Snap in towards goal. And Dell did pretty well then because... It Andrew Scott is a strong player. 84 to 25. McCormick's had plenty of work to do from the full back position there. Out towards the half back line. Jones only down as far as Richards. Up towards centre wing. Adam Richards. We can now play on. But oh, gee, they're struggling. Brown looking for the hand pass and then decides to. Kick and hope, up towards Lithgow, Cullen's there. Apps does well to Rove, but then undoes a lot of the good work by just blazing away into the forward line and probe it. Back takes a good running mark. A lot of these Clarence youngsters have done very well indeed today. Probert, McCallum's done a great oh. job. And speaking of great things, almost a tremendous oh. mark by Jaffray. Wasn't paid, must have dropped it. Giles, out towards Bealey, another one of the good youngsters. 
Clarence head to centre half forward. Jackson works his way to the front position. Couldn't drag it down. Went up with just the one arm. Sheriff, rare possession today, but it's a good one. And he's found Peter Apps. Who's down? Is that Lithgow? In Jeffrey landed on top of him. Doesn't look good for that Devonport Blues player. And out on the full here, so Clarence will move back into attack. He's trying to work out who that is. That's Tony Lithgow. And he looks in a lot of pain. He doesn't quite know what day it is, I don't think. Right across the old snozzeroo. Meanwhile, play goes on. Wade to Cullen. And Clarence will bring it forward through the grandstand side. This is Page. It wasn't a well-directed kick. In fact, one of the rare occasions in the last quarter and a bit that Clarence haven't used the ball to full effect. Towards half forward, G, they're going the long way home and finding it hard. Richards, hand pass. Brown, Holm does well to get the fist to it. Here's another opportunity for a Clarence build-up. McCallum, well tackled. Very quick hands. Were you suggesting, Gary Davidson, uh, that uh, a little bit of a forward rugby pass? It certainly did from David Page, and uh, we might have seen Tony Lithgow go off the field and uh, Gus McLennigan's come back on. But, uh, that's a bit of a, a huge blow, really, for, uh, for the Blues. And we're missing both McCoy now and Lithgow. One, an own injury, if you like, and the other, an opposition-inflicted injury. A few others missing in action as well. Now, here, Clarence at centre-half forward. Matthew Honey. Pretty impressive in the first quarter. Oh, oh, lovely little pass to Jones, who goes for home <laughs> and misses to the right. When you're hot, you're hot. Well, when you've got numbers around the football, as Clarence have had uh, for the, all of that second quarter and certainly for the 10 minutes or so into this quarter, it's uh, certainly building up to be a real route for them. And uh, to be 10 goals up 12 minutes into the third quarter is uh, certainly a great way to go about things. Clarence playing very, very well. And they have done for the last three weeks, so the sign's good for the Roos moving into the finals. Ben Harrison, the teal cupper. Good skill. And Brett Sheriff gets a kick. He's got Shane Smith all alone on centre wing, who can link up over the top to Apps. No, he won't because of the holding on from Garth Bealey. A bit of work then from Bealey. So Shane Smith goes back, kicks to centre half forward to a static forward line. Wade Anthony wearing number 54, spins out of trouble. Lovely kick to Peter Apps, who can race in, steady, shoot at goal, and miss. So nothing much happening for Devonport at the moment. 12-13 to 3-8. First score of the quarter. And they've been playing what, about 13, 14 minutes. Darren Winter done a very good job at full back. Up towards the half-back line, McLennan. Scoops it out, Morrison, wobbly, up towards full forward, Darren Winter there, apps the opportunity onto the non-preferred foot, Jaffray, I'll back him from here, I'll teach him not to waste money, over it goes, Holm, does well to Giles, who makes it, just doing everything with so much uh, more surety, the ruse at the moment, much more system about their game, Sheriff, has a little bit of a trot and a bounce. In towards half forward, looking for Brett Smith on the volley. Adam Richards, the chance. Now to Brett Smith. Up towards Richardson, who is paid the mark. Maybe a tad luckily. Liam Roundless thinks so anyway. Gary? We, we've got the opportunity of seeing it on replay, but it certainly was uh, touch and go. I think the young man should take uh, full toll of this and, and really give Devonport something to start uh, start off in a better vein. Much harder player than Brett Blair Brownless or an unkinder player would have really done a lot worse than that. There's Richardson's shot. Is it the last return for Devonport? It is indeed. So Matthew Richardson gets his first after a couple of behinds. And I think to say that's a much needed goal to Devonport would be one of the understatements of the decade. Well, it is, even though it was a, a lucky mark or a free. One's not really uh, certain about that one, but getting this, the ball out of the centre bounce is, uh, it's got to be the key objective of those players that are in there at the moment. But uh, well, They've only got two players in the centre bounce this time, Devonport, so they're really not doing it all that well. 
Somehow it's pushed out here towards McLennan, who looks to be limping a bit. Boundary throw in centre wing. It'll be Stocker and Honey. Oh, four Clarence players around the ball. Holdsworth, the classy mover, picks it up. Here's Rick Honey with an electrifying pace. Spins onto it. Snaps it goal and misses. Absolutely everything. Here's the bench of the Clarence side. I think they'd be pretty content about the situation as we've been playing 14 minutes just over. Giles. Shane Smith over the top stocker. Draws the player, then gets it over to Sheriff. Sheriff starting to get a couple of possessions this quarter. Spears it in. Jaffray been moved out to centre half forward by the, the look of things, or out onto the half forward line. Darren Winter. Apps meets Winter. And we'll see a throw in some 50 out from the Devonport goals. Well, if they get to within five or six goals at three quarter time, there is hope. I think there's a low flying kick that's just gone over the commentary. Oh, the well, modern footy these days. Very true. They're going to have to do an awful lot of uh, resurrecting, Rob, aren't they? Just not doing enough around the football. Clarence are certainly outnumbering them at every ground level contest. Well, here's another opportunity for them if Richie can pick it up inside. Now the ball was unkind for him. Andy Bennett's been round to check the progress of Tony Lithgow. So for Devonport Blues fans, we'll get an update on what's happened to the ex-Victorian. Now here's an opportunity for the Blues. Ricky Brown running through the middle. Kicks it up towards Jaffray's leg to the ball by Winter. And Jaffray takes the mark. He's kicked two goals. Too far out to score. And here's McLennan can take it and run in from an open goal from about 25 metres. And he's missed it. Would you believe it? Maybe They've what? had some chances, Devonport, and really, that's inexcusable. Missing from there. It is inexcusable for a senior player and uh, this level of football to be under no pressure at all and to miss so easily. We'll go across to Andy in a second. Ricky Brown will get a free kick out of that. And I don't know why players are complaining about that. It looks so obvious from over here. One wonders, Gary, why... They do that. Why they don't just get onto the game and say, yeah, that was that was a bad tackle. Jaffray, good punch away by Winter. Giles. Oh, look, they've got options of plenty. Wade can even go wider or kick long himself. Goes long. Brown underneath the ball. Honey. Can he get the run of it? He can't, but does brilliantly to control it. Flick it out to Brown. It's deemed to throw. Perhaps a tad unlucky because he'd done a lot of hard work, but the free kick going to Harrison on the half-back line. We'll chip it out to McLennan, who marks under Richards. Half-forward. Gee, where are the marking targets there? None. White Anthony underneath the ball. Holdsworth does well. Holm, Jones. Back to Jones it comes from Bealey over to Wade. Starting to just over-finesse a little bit at the moment. Clarence for mine maybe losing the plot because they've got so much control they could be going further ahead Giles over to Honey they've gone from one side of the ground to the other and made 20 metres now they're crisscrossing again to Jones they should lose it now he should be penalised he is now they've, they've had 10 possessions and travelled 20 metres I'm sure Lee McConnell wouldn't be all that happy about that but uh, the Devonport Blues aren't doing that, that much better here's Daniel Holm should pick it up, does with the left arm, scoops it in well, and then was caught high by Brett Sheriff. I don't know if there was any malicious intent with that. So Holm down. We don't know whether he'll be able to take the kick. Andy Bennett, how uh, is Tony Lithgow? Suspected concussion. I forgot to tell you, Nick Taylor also has broken his, I was suspected, broken uh, AC joint, and he uh, won't take any further part in the game for Clarence. Thanks very much, Andy. So let's go with some concussion. Ball in towards the Ruse half forward line. And we'll have a bounce. 
Yeah, not too good, is it? A couple of bad injuries out of that for Devonport and also, of course, Taylor for Clarence, who was uh, a very good player until he had to go off. Stocker goes up and just hopes. Holdsworth a high one towards Scott. McCormick in trouble. Jackson tried to do the Maradona unsuccessfully. And out on the full. Devonport to relieve. They're in all sorts of trouble on the scoreboard. They trail 85 to 33. Once we decide who's got to take the kick, it's McLennan. And he goes to stock of the target. Pecker plays up. Richards does well to get it over to Shane Smith. And turn to Wade Anthony. He goes up towards half forward. Brownless. Good defensive punch. Oh, Ricky Brown well played. Then couldn't get rid of it. And <laughs> then he holds on to the foot of Blair Brownless. And off the uh, play, Blair Brownless has to get the free kick into the centre. This is where they're killing him with the running players. Richie. Now, why wouldn't you pay advantage there? I must confess, Gary, it's still a rule that confuses and bemuddles me from week in to the next. Richie Long, up half forward. Callum, under pressure from Anthony. Jackson there to lend good support. Does well to get his boot to it, but ineffective. And touched and over for a throw -in. Twelve thirteen to four nine. Clarence well in control of this match. Twenty minutes into the third quarter, and they've really set up what looks to be victory with a seven-goal term against the Breeze in the second quarter. Jackson somehow gets the kick in. Here's Holdsworth, but the line wins out again. So Clarence will, with this win, you would expect firm up fourth spot. Might dent the hopes of Devonport for having a final at the North West Coast. Might get Gary Davidson to give us some inside information on where that elimination final will be. Put him under the spot. Here's Chris Dell at fullback as Scott went underneath it. McLennan to Morrison. Well, Scott's chasing him, but he gets his kick in in time. Kicks towards Jaffray. Well, Winter does very well, then gets the trip. And he'll come away with a free kick, Darren Winter. Tell us any secrets on where the elimination final will be, Gary? I can't, Rob, unfortunately. Not much help then. Now, here we are at Morrison in the middle of the ground. Good hand pass. Wade Anthony up towards the half-forward line. Feely, an athletic bit of defensive work then. He seemed to hang in the air. Richardson's caught with the ball. Good battle between him and Brownless. Brownless on top. Now, here's Apps at half-forward. Looks to centre the ball. Hull with the late punch. Did well. Richie. Oh, he's strong, isn't he? Probably the strongest player on the field. Kicks it out with the right boot up towards centre wing. Brett Sheriff's first there. He's had a better third quarter, Brett Sheriff. Such an important player. Richards now up to full forward. But and the kick's Sheriff's going to have to be come reported. Back. Sheriff's reported. The indiscretion was on. Is it McCallum out there, I think, uh, Gary? I think it is young McCallum, and he's played pretty well, McCallum. Uh, Another very, very good performance from him. We saw it against North Launceston when they played the Robins up at York Park and inflicted the first defeat on North Launceston and really has been one of the good players ever since. Well, I've got a number of good players. We saw Bealey just a moment ago in the action. Very, uh, showed a lot of experience in being able to defend the ball and so too McCallum, very good in that back half of the ground. Well, they both misjudge it. Jackson, he's had a curler of a third term. Kick three in this term, five for the match. The ball close to the boundary line. And in fact, over says the boundary umpire. Clarence building up to what should be a pearler of a last game next week against North Hobart, who at halftime are in all sorts of trouble against South Launceston, down by 79 points. Uh, two reports that we know of out of this game. One, uh, Paul Holdsworth, the allegedly striking uh, Cullen and that one there Sheriff uh, alleging allegedly uh, making illegal contact uh, with McCallum Richie's been a good player since that first quarter 
long up towards the edge of the square over the back dick the opportunity he has a very quiet day today hasn't he over to dell dell being mowed down by honey no options for him so he had to go to close towards the boundary line scott desperate giles there and the ball over the boundary line but the ruse just too desperate for devonport and too many passengers unfortunately don't like saying it for devonport but not enough of them having a red hot dip well here's wade anthony off to lithgow back on the field that's good to see brett smith now bombs it to half forward richardson very good mark made the ball his object and he came down with it he's playing on arguably the best center half back in the league in blair brownless and he's taken some nice grabs but brownless been a good player here's winter going through the pack apps goes and meets him well dean cullen off the field and out of bounds clarence haven't lost a game since the 20th of june when they went down to new norfolk here at bell reeve in that stirring game so it's been a good two months for the ruse and they've done it with a pretty young side out there average age 21 richardson it's bending back it's bending back it's a goal i think yes siree when you see the a goal umpire standing to attention like that you can say the two hands will be raised and a much needed goal for the devonport blues their second for this quarter and that's richardson second he's kicked both of them it's a pretty long goal too and uh, would have been just on the 50 meter line or certainly outside the 50 meter line and so he's taken a good mark and kicked a good goal in the space of a couple of minutes but uh, he needs to do more and of course the players upfield need to do more to get the ball to him so he can have the opportunity and i noticed too that uh, andrew scott's going into the center and peter ritchie's having a spell at full forward roll morrison out of the middle but page has an opponent at halfback so he takes the mark uncontested Hence to half forward they all overrun it first back there is wade anthony back in towards the middle of the ground or rather clinton dick sorry kicks it in towards the middle of the ground shane smith and devonport to the half forward line richardson and richards Clarence and Merv are stronger players out of that pack groundless towards giles well, good tackle on sheen from wade anthony and Devonport getting the kick here at centre half forward. 46 points the difference. Another two goals to Devonport in this third quarter would give them some faint hopes. Lithgow has to go against Big Sheen. That's a missed contest if ever there was one. So Clarence win possession. Out here to McCallum to feed it off. Really up towards the center of the ground Brett Smith underneath Jackson over the top comes down to Harrison oh this could open it up for Clarence here because there's five to one what a great effort that was from Cullen now the opportunity Giles strong tackle on him another strong tackle applied clever little chip by Cullen over to Apps Apps spears it into Jaffray should have taken that one and now it's left to Scott to tidy up for Clarence but long towards centre wing. Jones does well, oh, breaks the tackle. And gets it up towards Honey. Matthew Honey can't control it before it goes over the boundary line and will have a throw in. Just about, I'd say, into time on in the third quarter. Clarence doing it particularly well. They lead 85 to 39. Devonport playing a bit better, Gary, in the last five minutes or so. Well, they picked it up a notch or two, but I suspect perhaps also that Clarence have probably dropped back a little bit given that they've had such a great start to the quarter and got away to, to that two or three goal lead extra on top of the half-time score. Wade plays aggressive footy and keeps the ball in. Richards paddles it forward. Good work from Shane Smith. They haven't given up, but the horse might have already bolted. Shane Smith in towards the middle. Matthew Richardson takes another nice mark, probably his sixth or seventh for the day. Heads it out towards Gary McLennan, who missed an easy goal earlier in this term. It's up at full forward now. And this is where Clarence are doing so, so well. The fall of the ball in defence. McCallum back towards the centre of the ground. Richardson, almost a spectacular effort. Morrison has it. Hand passes out towards Stocker. Oh, he takes the grab, gets rid of one Clarence opponent. And Richardson, who's been busy in the last 10 minutes, kicks towards Jaffray. But still no one there for Devonport at ground level. Palm draws the man well, gets it across here towards Big Sheen, who charges his way through. 
Poor kick, though. Richardson can kick another goal here. The big fellow decides to go short and finds Adam Richards, who can go in and kick a goal from 25 metres, oh. but he has missed it. That's about four in this game from Devonport from about that distance. Why play on there? It's hard not to know whether anyone actually called him to play on, but uh, certainly within that sort of distance, you'd expect the player to stop. Size up the situation and uh, go back and have a deliberate shot at goal. Time running out in this quarter. Maybe time just for Clarence to get another get one on the board. Clever play, Giles. Over to Wade. Long kick, Richie. The sit from behind. Couldn't quite take it. And the siren sounds for three-quarter time with one would expect... A pretty happy Clarence camp. They lead 85 to 40. They lead by 45 points. And then we see Smith, I think it is, winded. As he came down in the kickoff, there were about three Devonport players in the pack, and unfortunately Smith was at the back and uh, hit the ground in a horizontal position. Always the worst way to hit it, Gary Davidson. Certainly, it's a great quarter again from Clarence. You know, they got away for, for, to a very, very good start. Cleared the ball out of the centre square tremendously well and uh, that man we see on our screen now Ken Jackson kicked three goals in the space of four or five minutes and uh, really set up the Clarence side for what looks like to be a very very good win and whilst Devonport came back in the latter stages of the quarter I suspect also that the Clarence players took a little bit of a breather but they need to regroup maintain that composure that's been able to set up this 45 point lead and uh, come up the hill into what looks like a situation now where the breeze has dropped somewhat and uh, finish off and maintain that huge psychological advantage they've been able to gain over Devonport and, and have it ready for them when they meet again in the elimination final. Parents players just waiting for coach Lee McConnon to arrive for the three-quarter time huddle. Here's some highlights from earlier on in the game. We are Morrison. He's been tagged all day by David Scott and uh, just hasn't given up. He's run everywhere to try and lift his side. Picked up a number of possessions. I think we'd see him Finishing up with about 30 possession, but that man coming off the wing, uh, David Giles, speared a couple of terrific passes into that forward line. That's really been one of the differences between the sides. That Clarence have been able to use the ball better into their forward line, and Giles coming off the wing to pinpoint Holdsworth on that occasion. Here we see him again, pace uh, to, to burn, and unfortunately tried to bomb a big torpedo in, and uh, well, old Chris Dell really couldn't get enough on that to punch it towards the line, and uh, the sort of crumbing that Devonport Blues are missing up in their forward line was shown by Andrew Scott on that occasion and he kicked the easiest of goals in the end and uh, Brett Jaffray's had a very good battle with Darren Winter and uh, found himself on his preferred kicking side missed a couple of early ones and was able to uh, to get that one through after a very very strong mark something that, that he's been renowned for in the competition this man's been left alone all day Scott Wade and uh, he got the ball across to Jackson Jackson's got five to his name they've all come from marks and solid marks and that was a terrific shot from the uh, from just inside the boundary line and he's been a thorn in the side of the Devonport Blues. First he had Rod, uh, Rod McCormick, now Chris Dell has picked him up. Andrew Scott, renowned as a defender, got three to his name. He's made some terrific leads out from the goal square and been a, a viable target up forward. Having a run in the centre now and Peter Ritchie's gone to full forward. I suspect just to give Ritchie a, a bit of a breather because he's been such a great player in at those centre bounces. See another strong mark from Rick Jaffray. Decided while no one was looking that he could just poke it through. As I said earlier, away picking up a lot of possessions, having a bit of a spell on that half forward flank at the moment, but we see some good crumbing. And here's the tagger, David Page, wearing the, uh, the jumper of David Morrison today, kicked the goal, something we don't expect taggers to do much. Another great mark by Jackson. Some undisciplined play by Brett Smith, saw a 50 metre penalty given on that occasion, and of course that made the job so much easier for Jackson. And uh, he looks like having uh, another large tally next to his name he's been in form over recent weeks five to three quarter time and a couple in the last quarter and I think that's the sort of thing that Lee McConnell would be urging now that they finish off the game finish the last 30 minutes full of running and really uh, demoralize this side and set up their chances for a uh, an elimination final in a few weeks time just thinking about Clarence that in the last few weeks they've really kicked some big scores and 12 goals to three quarter time is reasonable return again so all of a sudden found a forward line. Peter Knights with a few worries there. What can you say in this situation? 
Well, I think he needs to make some changes, and I think uh, the sorts of changes that, that I'd be looking at personally would be looking at that centre bounce first of all and putting some stronger players in there. People like Paul Richards or even Apps and Cullen might be people who've got that added bit of strength to be able to bulldoze the way forward in, in the same vein that Peter Ritchie is for Devon, for uh, Clarence, sorry. That's the sort of uh, thinking I'd be having there, and I'd be really looking for them to take some chances and move the ball on quickly. They really haven't moved the ball on with any great purpose. And of course, once the ball does get to that forward line, it's all clogged up and uh, no real chances of setting uh, the scoreboard alight. Well, here we have the story quarter by quarter and really set up by Clarence in that second term against the Breeze. Leading goal kickers, Jackson's kicked five to three quarter time. Scott's kicked three, Holdsworth two. And for Devonport, two each to Jaffray and Richardson. Wasn't it a great kick by young Richardson in the third quarter? Well, I hope that's lifted his confidence. I'm sure Peter Knights will be looking for more from him, but uh, he's relied on the players further up the field to get the ball into his area quickly, and he's certainly uh, led for the ball much, much better today. Unfortunately, he just hasn't had the, the supply that uh, centre-half all would be looking for, and so too Brett Jaffray, with only two goals next to their name. And it's interesting that both players are relying on their marking to kick the goals. As you look at the Clarence goal kickers, Jackson certainly relying on his marking, but you've got Holdsworth there, who's cleaned up at ground level to kick a couple. Well, let's uh, go, Rob, across and see what uh, Andy Bennett uh, gleaned from the coaches. Rod, um, Peter Knights, understandably, was still critical of his side in their ability to get to the contest. He urged them to get fair dinkum, and they are his words, get fair dinkum in their defensive aspect of the game. He believed they weren't working in some cases, didn't even chase. He uh, urged them in this quarter to keep the ball in the centre. They had to play, uh, they have to score and score heavily, so they need to keep the ball in the centre of the field. And certainly they have to work harder to run to the fall of the ball. Lee McConnell, on the other hand, was very pleased with their first 20 minutes. He said uh, that's the sort of football that he would like his side to play, but he was equally critical of the last 10 minutes or so when he believed they became indirect and their work rate dropped off appreciably. He uh, praised David Page for the job he'd done uh, to date on uh, Morrison but he urged him to keep his energy levels up. He thought Morrison started to get it on top towards the end of the quarter. Um, Blair Brownless, he was equally disappointed with him. He thought young Richardson was getting away from him and he had to play tighter and punch the ball away more often. Thanks very much, Andy Bennett. Let's see uh, whether what the coaches have said can uh, rev up the troops as Richie gets it out to Holm. He goes to half forward, Holdsworth there. Oh, he does it too well. Then more desperation from Clarence. They seem to be just running that little bit harder at the footy. As Honey's over there, just bouncing the ball along, controlling it till he's finally met by Dell. And I don't know why Jackson goes in and gives a push and a shove. That was a perfectly legitimate bump. Throw in Brett Smith and Honey. An infringement, and it's going Brett Smith's way. So a little bit of relief off the back line for the Devonport Blues. But they need to do more than relief from the back line, Rob Waters. They need to kick a half a dozen quick goals. And if they did that, they'd still be a couple behind. So plenty of work for the Blues, but they're kicking with the breeze. I suppose that's about the most optimistic thing you can say here. So for Devonport supporters, I think that's even dropped away. Well, here's an indication of the level of commitment by the Devonport Blues players today. There were five Clarence players versus two Devonport Blues in the real contest at ground level, and that's really been indicative of the way Clarence have gone about their job today. Well, Sheen's come on now to go into the ruck. Richie doesn't get any distance at all with that kick. And Brett Smith has it. Looks to team it out. Young Richards done okay since coming on. Shane Smith has recovered from a nasty blow in the third quarter. A bit of a walk being wounded at the moment, Devonport. McCoy off the field. Lithgow copped one high, but he's back on. Here's Richardson at half forward. Wade Anthony caught high. And must get the free kick. Anthony. Hello, Holdsworth's going off. If we can get a shot on the other side, looks as though he's done his leg rather badly. That's a cruel blow for Clarence. Uh, Rob, sorry to interrupt you. That's OK. Well, that's an important loss. And he's going straight into the dressing rooms, Paul Holdsworth. No, he's always going straight to the bench. Gee, that's bad luck. Meanwhile, Lithgow has it in the forward pocket with his shoulder strapped. Over here, I wonder if the Andy Bennett's going to get a shoe allowance. He's going to travel, has to travel a fair bit of uh, territory every time he goes over to check on an injured player. 
Oh, well, that's why he's earning his thousands for, I suppose. Now, here's Tony Lithgow. Good kick. So, weather's hopeless far, I suppose. Devonport kicked the first in this final quarter. 6-10 to 12-13. So, they're 39 points down. Stranger things have happened. I remember some years ago, Clarence and Bernie had that epic struggle. The team came from 10 goals behind to draw. And very important that they do at least gain something uh, psychologically or mentally out of this. Uh, the Devonport Blues. Because they don't want to come up in two weeks' time against Clarence in an elimination final, having had their uh, posteriors kicked and kicked very soundly by the Ruse. Winter does it particularly well. Goes out wide. Cullen... Doesn't get a kind bounce, but traps it and then decides that being a little surrounded, he needs to go over the boundary line with it defensively. Gary. Just had the glasses on, Paul Holdsworth, while he's sitting in the coach's box, and it looks very much like the trainers and the medical staff are paying attention to his right ankle. So that is a bit of a blow. You can see them gathered around there trying to find out whether or not he's going to take any further part in the game. At least for Clarence, who've had a horrid run so far as knee injuries are concerned. They're not looking for the knee. You look at Demetrio, you look at Main coming back uh, after a knee reconstruction. Uh, they and Scott Adams, of course. So uh, they have had a horrid run with knee injuries this year to class players. Adams a big blow for them approaching the finals. And let's hope that Michael Demetrio can recover from uh, another knee injury. What terrible luck he's had, their recruit from Melbourne. Winter controls it very well. Takes it to centre half forward, but the Blues players kept on going as well. Lithgow persisted along pretty well. And have another go at it here. Was outbodied that oh. the umpire's given a free kick yeah. to Clarence. Didn't oh. agree with that, Rod? No. Gary? He's not going to change his mind, so it's played on, Rod Kilner. Wait. <laughs> Something you've got to live with. Out towards the half forward flank. You were just having a go at the players for going crooked. The umpiring decisions before. Now you're doing it. It's contagious here at Bell Reef. Rick Honey didn't make any effort to mark the ball. Adam Richards, centre half back, in towards the middle of the ground. Good mark taken by Shane Smith. What a great pair of hands he's got for a player about 5'10. Up towards Stocker. And the big six foot eight forward goes from behind. Here's a chance now for them. App swoops on it. Uh, comes in towards goal and hits the post. Gee, they really have missed some opportunities. That wasn't the easiest one of them, but should have been kicked. One of the pleasing things was that you saw somebody running to the fall of the ball in this Devonport Blues forward line. Something we haven't seen too often uh, in the first three quarters of football. So that's the sort of thing that Peter Knights will be looking for to at least boost that scoring opportunity for the Blues. Three behinds to Apps. Delightful kick in once again by Winter. Morrison, oh, that hand pass a little bit astray. Wade Anthony, he's been a good battler for the Blues today. Honey, cleverly. Needs support. Can he pick it up? He can't find the handle, can he? Cameron Brown does. Scrambles the kick. Just trying to work it forward, push it forward. Clinton Dick. And that says something about Clinton Dick's game today. He's uh, been in scintillating form on the wing and he finds himself... Down on the back line, maybe the back pocket. Here's Paul Holdsworth. And ice around that right ankle. Sheen, Paul Richards. It's a high floater. Under the ball, Wade Anthony. Over the top comes Richie. Cullen, been a great game from him today. Jackson, similarly, five goals. Three in the third quarter. And a good defensive mark by Dell. Off he goes and finds Dick. Kick put Dick under a fair amount of pressure, but Devonport keep out of it. And the ball's gone out of bounds. Clarence slightly into attack here, although a fair way out from goal. And it's going really well in their grasp. But they've just slackened off the pace a bit. Andy Bin has just come in front of us. He's done a complete lap at the oval. And we'll hear from him very, very soon. I wonder whether he should have had that blanket out collecting money from people over the fence. <laughs> it would probably be the slowest 400 metres recorded for quite some time. Now, Paul Richards back towards centre wing. Shane Smith missed one. It's been unusual. 
And Dean Cullen, his movements there suggest that he was caught high. Brett Smith and Honey down to Adam Richards, who Rob mentioned a little bit before in the third quarter, has done quite well since coming on. This is another young man that has impressed us, I think, today. Probert into the centre of the ground. That kick, not all that flash, and finds Lithgow. Lithgow, the lead from Stocker. Darren Winter read it superbly and takes a very good mark. Been a very good player today, Darren Winter, for the Roos. And look at that, finds Giles. He could go in board to Jones and then ran himself out of options. Now, here's a clash coming up. Richard Zandor... Giles, but I think Richard's just showed a little bit more desire to get to the football and push it over the boundary line where we'll see a throw in. The game just winding down, 10 minutes gone, final term, 85 plays 47. Maybe some lost pride to restore for the Devonport Blues. Brett Sheriff goes towards the wing. Wade Anthony and Wade go battle here. Wade does well, but Devonport have the numbers. Tony Lithgow now has plenty of room and Richardson leads in towards the half forward line he's very quick on his feet isn't he Lithgow he was able to dance around people and get himself clear and uh, certainly one part of his game that really impresses me well Richardson's having a shot here seems to be a good old hoof if he gets onto this no he's just taking his time looking for the lead and Jaffray's got it gee whiz it wasn't a very good pass but my gosh Brett Jaffray uh, certainly made up the last five or six metres to get his hands around it uh, certainly did here we see Lithgow dancing around getting it to Richardson Richards had needed a pass similar to the one he got from Lithgow. See the height on this ball as it comes into uh, Jeff Ray, but the last five or six steps got him there. So the shot at goal misses. Hasn't had the kicking boots on today, Brett Jeffrey. Two goals, two. Andy Bennett, we might now go to you and get a comment if we can on the fitness of Paul Holdsworth. Um, Rod, uh, Paul Holt, well, if, uh, excuse me, but if this keeps up, I'll have to apply for a travel allowance if, that, uh, if these injuries keep occurring. Paul Holdsworth has rolled his right angle, it's very swollen, and we certainly won't see him for the rest of the game. And thank you for your heartfelt support. It's no okay. problems at all. That's OK, Andy. In fact, I think there could be someone else coming off in a second. <laughs> Andrew Scott up towards centre wing. Jackson high. Standing down, Richards. Up towards... The half forward line, Apps has to beat three, beats one, with the ball close to the boundary line, and in the end, over. Important for the Devonport Blues that they get another couple on the board, they get the margin a little smaller for two weeks' time. Richards, a high one, could bring rain, thumped on by Cullen. Over there is Apps, and in the end, the boundary line will win out. In fact, from three-quarter time, we see that young Probert has gone on to Richardson and Brownless has gone on to Stocker. Brett Smith trying to get it down to Shane Smith. Now the opportunity for Scott. Strong work, clever work. Over to, Pro, uh, to uh, Honey he goes. This is Matthew Honey. Has a couple of bounces, then kicks to the open spaces. Wade and Richards. Richards there. Gets rid of it just in time. Sheriff being held by Giles. Must come away with a free kick. And I, in fact, Sheriff Richards gets it and has to go back to Sheriff. Confusion all round. So Sheriff now can kick towards Lithgow, who's just eased his way down to half forward. Scott late on the scene gives away the free kick. And off screen, Ben Richardson's been taken. Ben Harrison, sorry, has been taken from the, uh, th the ground. And Ricky Brown's coming back on. He's Jaffray on the lead again. Couldn't drag it in. And Callum barges his way through, gets it across here towards Bealey, who does a fancy little spin loses possession Jaffray back to Richards both sides mucking around a bit here and it's gone over the line Gary there are a number of scenarios as to where the elimination final could be well two really North Hobart up on the northwest coast but there are a number of scenarios as to what could make which option happen if North Launceston finish on top or second or third and who else is involved where would you play well, I think the TFL are going to be committed to playing at least one final in the north of the state, whether it's at Devonport, Burnie or Launceston, uh, will be reflected in the way the teams do finish, and that's why they've held off to making that decision. They wouldn't play the Devonport game at Burnie, would they? 
Well, here's uh, Wade Anthony. Shot at goal. Looks pretty good off the boot, and he's drilled it. So some success at last for Devonport. They've kicked the only two goals now of this final quarter. And indeed, they've kicked about the last four of the match. Well, I suspect that the Clarence players have just uh, taken the pressure off somewhat and uh, full credit to the Devonport Blues. They're still in there chipping away and uh, Anthony's been in their top three or four players. He's uh, certainly been committed enough to get in and get the football. Unfortunately for Peter Knights and, uh, and those players that have played well, there just haven't been enough of them and that must be disappointing given that the finals are only a couple of weeks away. Do you think you'd be having a red hot dip to ensure your place in that finals lineup, wouldn't you? Morrison chasing McCallum. Morrison does it well. Richardson, can you get the hand pass off? No, great tackle by Probert. But Lithgow's good enough to shrug one tackle. Lines up the goals. Has it got enough bend? There's going to be a free kick downfield. They're within the five goals, you know. The infringer is Cullen. The receiver is Brett Smith. And I don't think they'll have enough time to get up. But psychologically, it's important that instead of losing by 50 points, they maybe go down by three goals or something. Only 13 minutes in. There is time. It would have to be one of the all-time greatest turnarounds in a game of football for them to get up. Oh. Especially with a kick like that. That is inexcusable. It is inexcusable, and I think the, uh, the Blues really blew their chance, if you like, in that second quarter when uh, Clarence kicks 7-3 going up the hill. Uh, the, the Clarence players wanted to win the football when the game was there to be won. And I think they're just playing out a very nice little scenario to just to get the four points. Well, that's a bit of a pity for me because it would have made the margin four goals and another one after that would have given us some hope for a, a closer finish. But as it is, five goals the difference and Clarence have the footy on centre wing. Scott Wade now, he's been allowed to roam free all day and he boots it up towards the half forward line. Here's Cameron Brown, kicked eight goals for Clarence two weeks ago. Ball in dispute. Cullen kicks it out towards the half-back line. McCormick going backwards. Now he's right. Kicks it in towards oh. the middle of the ground. <laughs> and that will be a Devonport Blues free kick. And it will go to David Morrison. David Page has been wearing him like a glove all day. Morrison started off brilliantly in the first quarter. Been a bit quieter ever since, but still a worthwhile contributor. Anthony up towards full forward. Winter does well on Jeffrey. Jeffrey goes backwards. Tony Lithgow has done some promising things. Here's another of them. Shoots for goal from about 50 metres. What's he done? Bit of work here for the goal umpire. He's put it through. Well, the goal, goal umpire did well to start his feet. He's just disguising very well a prodigious limb. Well, I think... Clarence would be disappointed with this because Devonport have kicked the last five goals and they're now within four goals. Well, it would worry Lee McConnell because his side played very, very well, as we mentioned, in that second quarter. Not too badly in the third quarter because they got away to a great start, but uh, after that, uh, they've just dropped it back a notch or two and uh, full credit to Devonport Blues for perhaps picking it up a notch or two. And it's great to see from the finals perspective too that if Devonport can come back and really uh, make Clarence sweat here, we'll add an awful lot of interest to the elimination final. And they're running off the back line pretty easily at the moment, up towards Jackson. Had a superb third quarter, in towards the goals, and Peter Ritchie. And I think Clarence have lost out, very much so, since Ritchie went out of the centre and up onto the forward line in that third quarter. I don't think it's a, a real coincidence, Gary, that... Uh, that is when Devonport have uh, edged back into the game. Well, certainly they've had more application in the centre bounces and they've been able to clear it a number of times, whereas this man on your screen was uh, the major instigator of uh, many of the forward thrusts by Clarence, particularly away from those centre bounces. Uh, first goal for Clarence for some time in the offering here and straight through the high diddle diddle for Peter Ritchie. That's his first goal of the game. The steadier for Clarence, their 13th, and they lead once again by... 30 points. I'm not quite certain whether we'll see this or not, but that was the, uh, the result of Jackson gathering the ball after the marking contest with Paul Richards. But Paul Richards, in fact, tried to mark the football rather than punch it away like a good defender should. And I think Peter Knights would be disappointed with that because 
it really gave uh, a chance for Kent Jackson to get back onto the ball because the ball fell down to his part of the ground and was getting the ball to Richie. It was a grave mistake by Paul Richards. So Morrison boots Devonport forward now, back to five goals the margin. Peter Apps, who's kicked three behinds, no goals. Good kick out towards Richardson, didn't quite get there. Now he's got the chance. And young Probert throws him over the line. And he's getting a free kick. Richardson failed to dispose of the football in the correct manner. He's played a good game for someone in his second game. Interview with Roger Curtis at quarter time. Espousing the youth policy of Clarence. And it's certainly been on show here today at Bell Reeve. Mind you, Devonport have got many young players as well. So good to see that two clubs in the final series will be going it with their young, homegrown youngsters. Now here's Andrew Scott. Can draw the man or go out wide in towards the forward pocket. David Page now from the boundary line. Centres the kick. Looking for a mark. Sheen probably should have dragged it in. Rick Honey now, trying to use his pace, but Dell with his experience and persistent wins out. McCormick up towards Adam Richards, and all of a sudden, Morrison boots it up towards centre-half forward. Jaffray goes underneath it. Richardson looking to hand it off. And eventually, somehow, he gets it to Jaffray, who was caught high, weaves around about three of them from 50, boots it long, and deserved a bit better than that Brett Jaffray, who has always kept on trying today. Two goals, three for the skip up. And that was the best passage of play from Devonport all day, I thought, Gary, running it out of that back line. Well, they certainly had their numbers running for the ball. I, I suspect that they were players who were sitting back because they were left behind by the Clarence forward thrust. Now, yeah, here comes Wade. A lot of possessions again today. Over to Bealey, who can pinpoint Jackson, and it takes a great mark. Can go for a bit of a trot. Runs into the sun. And in the meantime, there's going to be a free kick going Devonport's way. Sheriff was being uh, held. He wasn't being legit legitimately shepherded, according to umpire Fair. There's the long kick. Centre wing. Harrison in front. Anthony behind. Richards. Now Harrison again. Can chip up towards Richardson, who takes the mark. At least they're fighting it out, Devonport. We'll give them some consolation, some hope. As Richardson blazes away, and blazes away very inaccurately. Two goals and three behinds to Matthew Richardson. 63 plays, 91. And Clarence doing it pretty well. Good kick from Blair Brownless, but Shane Smith was first there. Inset Young Richards had a good game. Adam Richards for the Blues. Kicks to half forward. Apps couldn't take it. Scott Wade, another possession. He's knocked up getting the footy today. Scott McCallum, another quietly effective game for him. Here's David Page. And in front of their loyal supporters, they take the ball in towards the middle of the ground. Back in towards the Matthew Honey direction. He's been a bit of a find as well. But they lose it now. Morrison kicks it towards Brett Jaffray. Who's had Darren Windsor to contend with all afternoon. That's not really a pleasant sight. Uh, the ball's over the line. 13-13-91. Clarence Devonport, 8-15-63. Thumb from Richardson. In towards full forward. Danger here for the Clarence defenders. McCallum tries to go through between two of them and has won himself the free kick. Then the advantage is paid and the Ruse will run it out of defence. This is Holm. A little bit of a worm burner, wasn't it? He goes as far as Sheriff. He chips it up to Morrison. Oh, it was off before he really knew that he was free. And the ball over the boundary line. Time ticking away. And so too Devonport's hopes. Indeed, they have been pretty well buried since the second quarter onslaught of uh, the Ruse. Now Morrison. And the free kick going by Jackson. For a high tackle, said the umpire. Scott. Out now to Jones. He's been a good player too. Honey, couldn't quite take it. That's a throw. 
and that could be 50. No, not being paid. No, clearance to go deep into attack, and it's Honey. Just off, honey. Just sorry, Rod, just off screen, you've got Shane Smith, probably one of the better players for Devonport, down in the uh, goal square at the Devonport Blues end uh, in the hands of the trainer. We get Andy Bennett to run out there and see what's the matter. <laughs> Andy's shaking his head. Looks like a shin. Well, because they've got no one that can come on, have they? It looked like a towel around the shin, in fact, Rob Water, so perhaps he might have either strained something or a nasty gash. Being very pedantic here at Bell Reeve. Scott Wade's shot at goal misses. So things dawdling along here as the game closes to an inevitable Clarence victory here. Two minutes away from time on. And once again, the Roos have impressed. They've taken the foot off the accelerator in the final quarter and allowed Devonport to get to within four goals at one stage. Could have been two or three if some of the opportunities were taken by a few of the Devonport players. Really, Clarence have done everything right today. And their form of the last couple of months really is heartening. Here's Cameron Brown. And that hits the post. It was bending and bending back, but it just didn't have the necessary go on it. And another poster. Been a few today, haven't they? Mm. A few shots missed from Devonport from about 20 to 25 metres, too. Brett Smith. Ricky Brown. Long bus trip back, I'd suggest. Ben Harrison. And Harrison chipping up towards Wade Anthony. He's certainly been one of the very best of the Devonport players today. He's been a goer for four quarters. Kicking from inside 50, and that should be 50. Caused a few worries in the commentary box when he came on in the second half of number 54. It did indeed. Kick doesn't look real bad in travel. I think he's just snuck it home. He has. So well played to Wade Anthony, his second goal. Both coming in this the last quarter. And the Blues, to their credit, keep on keeping on. It was a good mark by Harrison and... Uh... He was looking to get it out to, to Wade Anthony as he ran past, but uh, was being well held and held up. Just a little chip in the end going across to Wade Anthony, and uh, quite rightly, as Rod Kilner said, he's played a very good game and would be in the best three or four players for the Blues today. It's a shame he didn't have another four or five mates with him, otherwise they wouldn't be in this position four goals down. Exactly 24 points the difference here, and Devonport have the footy again. Through Anthony, up towards the half-forward line. Well, of all the forwards here, Jeff Ray and Richardson. Andrew Scott does well, but Harrison was in the right place at the right time. Then he was smothered off it. <laughs> oh, that was an interesting manoeuvre from Andrew Scott. Saw the presence of Richardson there, thought he might go underneath him. And then copped a smack in the snout from the boundary umpire as he signalled out of bounds. Perhaps the boundary umpire could report himself, Gary, for a high tackle or something. Here's Tony Lithgow. Hooks it back on the left boot. And McCallum in the way. Very impressive player, Scott McCallum. Harrison, the teal cupper, goes up and takes a good mark. And I think he's hurt his ankle as he came down after taking the mark. Just what they need, Devonport. He goes to his teal cup teammate in Matthew Richardson, who has it thumped away from him. Isn't that great to see a 17-year-old at centre-half forward being opposed by an 18-year-old at the moment at centre-half back in Probert? Mm. Terrific to see the young talent. The unfortunate thing is that a lot of the young talent will be moving over the water to the AFL. Harrison stands, delivers. No one home for Devonport. And Leah Brownless comes out and takes an uncontested mark. Just lays it off to Scott Wade, who in turn goes over to Kent Jackson, who goes up towards the half-back line. Ricky Brown nearly intercepted. Chris Dell off the ground. And it'll be a throw-in. Is the game really just winding down now? I think we would be into time on, would we not? Well done by Shane Smith. He's also been a very impressive player for Devonport today. That time off target. And his first score for the game. But really, you look at this last quarter, and uh, it has been Devonport which has dominated the score sheet. 
Clarence indeed adding just one goal and two behinds while Devonport have added four six but Rob as they say that was after the horse had vaulted which went in the second quarter when the ruse kicked seven against the breeze chain of hand passes ends up on the center wing good tackle from sheriff but it won't be rewarded central umpire says fellas you better throw it in sheriff a disappointing start to the day got into it a bit in the third quarter but not one of his better ones for 1992 morrison now on the left boot up towards full forward and stocker came out almost took it appealing for a hold shane smith towards young richards dragged off it the strength of the clarence defenders emerges here brown lost to bearley bearley in towards center wing all devonport here and tony lithgow has made a good return after copping a high one in the third quarter kick to center half forward richardson the little fellow had to go up and try and get the mark couldn't do it and clarence have won a free kick at center half back and scott wade must be vying for best of field honors today gary davidson well, he certainly had plenty of possessions, but this man kicking the ball out of defence has just roamed out of there far too easily for mine, and uh, I think that'd be very disappointing for Peter Knight. Jackson, centre wing. The sun beats down. Richie. There's the siren sounds and ends the game with Clarence running out winners very convincingly in the end. 13 15 93. Devonport 9 16 70 margin 23 points in the end and clarence i think did that very easily although perhaps lee mcconnon would be a little bit upset gary davidson that uh, they didn't really press on and uh, conversely you could say at least peter knights might have got some consolation out of the game by the fact that devonport did have a dip probably their best dip in the last quarter and perhaps the last 15 minutes of the third well i'd agree with that rod and uh Lee McConnell would be disappointed that they only kick four goals after half time after that uh, scintillating second quarter where they kick seven three up the hill against a slight breeze but Peter Knights might be uh, somewhat relieved that this is over because they were severely embarrassed in that second quarter because the Clarence players just wanted to get the ball and not enough uh, players from the Devonport Blues were there to support the likes of Anthony and Morrison and uh, the work that was done at centre half forward by Richardson they really were let down by some good players they clearly beaten in the centre bounces and uh, the way Richie's cleared the ball out of the centre square, uh, Peter Knights would have been uh, wishing he had been playing in a navy blue jumper rather than a white and red jumper and that was where the game was won and lost in that second quarter. 7-3 as I say to 1-4 really set it up for a, uh, a terrific win. You can see the players there very happy. Roger Curtis on the right of the screen, he's obviously uh, not too keen to get the arms around his uh, his uh, players fear of getting that uh, navy blue jacket dirty but he'd be very happy that uh, they've secured the first fourth spot and maybe keeping their fingers crossed that perhaps hobart might falter in such a way that they could in fact get third rob as well as uh, some unfortunate injuries to come out of the game uh, there was taylor who's uh, dislocated the shoulder or the ac joint uh, we've also got young mccoy who played very well with a fractured cheekbone uh, paul holdsworth with an ankle injury uh, there's also two significant reports to come out of the game that we know of. Uh, one, Paul Holdsworth, who was allegedly, uh, who's reported, and also uh, Brett Sheriff, two very important players. So that, those are significant things to come out of the game with the finals very close to us indeed. In fact, only one week away now. Hard to believe. Andy Bennett's been a hard-working member of the team today, and with him he's got the victorious coach of Clarence, Lee McConnon. Congratulations on the win, Lee. But uh... It was a bit, a bit of a funny sort of game for her. I thought you played well and won the game when it was there to be won, when it had to be won, but the foot uh, came off the accelerator a bit in the second half. Yeah, that's probably the disappointing part of the... <coughs> excuse me, Andy, the disappointing part of today's game that we um, played one quarter of footy mm. and got it through and we did let it off towards... Well, certainly in the last quarter, they come back and they fought back well, but, uh, oh, well, I suppose we won and that's the main thing. Yes, with, uh, with the finals looming and obviously they're your, uh, your, they're your opponent, the psychological advantage, did you... Uh, push that with your players at all? We did to a certain degree. I, I think it really we're, we've played fairly well over the last few weeks. But yes, that was something that we, was brought up that we would try and win today, obviously, to um, set us on the way. And, and in the first round, they'd beaten us by a couple of points. So yeah. there's a bit of an incentive there, yeah. Yeah, suddenly the spur. You won convincingly out of the centre. Young uh, Matthew Honey, I, I assume he's a youngster, uh, was a, has been a bit of a fine for you? Well, he certainly has. We. Uh, got a clearance from him from Gnorky about six weeks ago and mm. I dare say that Matthew in the six weeks that 
six games he's played with us, we brought him straight into the seniors, in fact. Never yeah. played senior footy before, but the six games he's played with us, he's been in the best six or eight players. So, yeah, we're very happy with him. Yeah, it's a real bonus for you. Your uh, key players, especially Scotty Wade, played pretty well. But uh, I thought some of your lesser lights, or your lesser known players, uh, Matthew Honey, Matthew Jones, uh, I assume he's a youngster as well. Yeah. Scott McCallum again did well. David Page did a good job on uh, David Morrison. Well, the other players have got us through in the second round. Mm. Andy, so, you know, the other ones have uh, done very well for us and they've continued to do well, so um, oh, yeah, there's, there's positive signs there. Yeah, the uh, the negative side today, I guess, was the injuries you copped, David, uh, Paul Holdsworth and um, Nick, Taylor. Nick Taylor with the shoulder. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Well, definitely Nick Taylor's uh, hurt his shoulder and I think that may be the year f end of the season for Nick. Uh, Paul rolled an ankle, in fact, I think Daniel Holm stepped on him, so but knowing Paul Holdsworth, I think he'll come through fairly well. Yes, and that's seven on end and one to go. You must be looking forward to the finals. We certainly are. We were uh, looking probably down the barrel a little, going back eight or ten weeks ago where we were quite struggling along. But uh, a lot of the guys have come of age and a lot of young players are improved. Uh, so, we, yeah, we're certainly looking forward to it. All positive signs for you. Thanks for yeah. your time, Lee. Thanks very much, Andy. Well, thanks very much to Andy and Lee McConnor. And there you have the story, really, as Lee mentioned. They won it with one quarter, and that was in the second term against the Breeze. Leading goal kickers today, Jackson electrifying at times. Kick five, three to Scott, two to Holdsworth, and two to those three Devonport players on the right of screen. Next week is the final round before the finals. We've got the Bay and the Burnie Hawks. What a big game between North Launceston and Hobart. New Norfolk, South Launceston. We'll be at North Hobart and Clarence at League Headquarters and also Devonport play Lenorke at Devonport Oval. So good afternoon here from the Bell Reeve Oval. Good win today for Clarence and both teams, Clarence and Devonport, will again be in action in two weeks' times in the finals. You're unbelievable.